It's time for Twit This Week in Tech. My arch rival, Dan Benjamin, joins Tim Stevens as we talk about the week's news stories, including Google's big announcement and why I think the Nexus 7 is the tablet to beat. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for This Week in Tech is provided by the new Winamp for Android, featuring wireless sync and one-click iTunes import. Now with free daily music downloads and full-length CD listening parties. Download it for free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 416, recorded July 28th, 2013. I'd tap that tree. This Week in Tech is brought to you by GoToMeeting with HD Faces from Citrix, the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate with colleagues and clients from anywhere. You can share the same screen and see each other face-to-face -face with HD video conferencing, even from an iPad. Sign up for your 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, use the promo code TWIT. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TWIT7. And by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with ShareFile from Citrix. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit sharefile.com, click the radio microphone, and enter TWIT. And by audible.com. Now you can listen to 340 courses and 9,000 lectures from the world's most engaging professors. Go to audible.com slash great courses. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show that covers all your tech needs each and every week, and we're going to have a fun one this week to my left in studio. It's so nice to finally meet Dan Benjamin of the 5x5 Network. Uh, I've been following Dan for a long time. When did you start 5x5? Five five? Uh, about 2009. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time. And what yeah. was your first show? First show that I did was an interview show called The Pipeline. And then yeah. I did... Uh, still doing it. Uh, still doing it occasionally. And, uh, and I did another one called uh, The Conversation. What prompted you to get into my space? Into yours? Uh, you know, I'd been doing podcasts uh, on and off for, uh, for a while, since like maybe 2005, 2006. And I, you know, I was at a place where I had been, I had been like a CTO of some tech startup in San Francisco. And I didn't, I didn't like that. And I loved, but I loved doing the podcast. It was so much fun. I always wanted to be uh, in radio and, and TV. And that was my major for a little oh, while really? in college. Oh, yeah. interesting. Until they talked me out of it. And, uh, and it then. It was a wise move. Yeah, that's what everyone says. <laughs> so I actually was like, I did software development and I did IT and I did that stuff for a long time. But I always wanted in my heart to do, you know, to do radio and I read a piece on you in the New York Times that was talking about what you guys were doing and, and, and the success that you'd had coming from, you know, radio. leveraging radio yeah. and, and, and doing it like this. And I thought, well, if, he, if, you know, if he's able to build this whole business, like I can pay my mortgage, right? So that's what I started out to do. And I brought the sort of separate shows together into one umbrella. And uh, you're doing more than that now. You have yeah. how many shows? 30? 30, 30, Almost Patty like 40, said 30, 40? 40. She just counted she 40, says, 42. 42 shows, so. uh, can you stop now? No. <laughs> no, I can't. That's what happens. Can you stop? No, it's yeah. what happens. You go, oh, I, I can do a couple more. I'll do a few more. But yeah. you're doing more than I am. We're, we don't do that many. I think we do 35. I'm nervous about doing too many because it's confusing, I think. Uh, I look at Revision 3 and they had so many shows, I didn't. I couldn't figure out what they were doing anymore. Right. I mean, the problem is people come and they... Uh and, and they get to the page or they get to the site or they look at it on iTunes and there's so many different shows right. and which one are they supposed to go to? So it's kind of an ongoing challenge to, uh, to figure that out. But also here, I'm so glad he's here. Tim Stevens, formerly editor-in-chief of Engadget, now automotive racer. Uh, doing lots of things, whatever whatever suits my fancy at the moment. I'm uh, yeah, getting my, my car back ready for race and uh, having some good conversations with folks. And I just got um, my own blog spun up again. So uh, yeah, I'm just kind of uh, taking it easy for a little while. Digitaldisplacement.com. And as Dan pointed out, observed you haven't blogged since september 2008 six so, years yeah. welcome back yeah. I, thank you i shut that down when i w got to engadget uh, back in the summer of 2008 and uh, yeah i haven't had a chance to post anything since then so yeah i thought i'd go ahead and post some stuff up there in the interim and then uh, yeah we'll see where the wind takes me from here so what happened at engadget 
Uh, there's not a lot uh, that I can that I can or should say at this point, but uh, suffice to say, uh, I'm, I'm no longer with Engadget. It's been about two weeks now since uh, since I stepped away from there. And, uh, and yeah, since then I've been having a lot of good conversations with a lot of people. Uh, there's, there's thankfully, I'm happy to say a lot of interest uh, in what uh, you know, what I was able to do there. And, uh, and so I'm, you know, looking forward to seeing what uh, what the next chapter is. Well, I've always been a huge fan, and uh, we will, you know, continue to have you on anytime you you want to because uh, you're just great. And I wish you, you luck. I'm sure you'll end up somewhere that you want to. But meanwhile. Uh, if you follow him on his blogger and his uh, Google Plus, he's having fun working on the cars, fixing them up. When's your next race? Uh, my next race is uh, middle of August, going down to to Lime Rock actually for wow. a day of auto crossing. Wow, isn't that awesome? It's nice to have a little free time. I gotta say, I wish somebody'd <laughs> sure fire me. I, I cannot time. wait just to take it <laughs> as he looks around for. Nobody can fire me. It's terrible. <laughs> So, and I'm not saying you were fired, Tim. I don't know what happened, and we're not uh, we're not guessing. And I know you can't probably, for legal reasons, say what happened. But uh, I'll just keep smiling. Their loss. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Thank you. So, I am really happy. I have two things in my hot little hand that Google announced on Wednesday. This is the Nexus uh, 7 2013 edition, and uh, I didn't even want to. I like it so much, I didn't take it off my TV. I have the Chromecast at home. I wanted to. <laughs> I didn't want to take it off the TV. <laughs> Um, it was kind of a surprising announcement on Wednesday because, well, this had leaked out. The Nexus 7 had fully leaked out. Everybody everybody knew that's what, you know, the invitation was breakfast with Sundar Pichai, kind of a casual, laid-back thing. Not a lot of people were invited. Uh, they did stream it, thank goodness, because we weren't invited. But at 9 a.m., they we were able to turn on the stream and watch. And uh, nobody was really surprised because uh, it had been a year since the original Nexus 7. It was due for a refresh. Um in hindsight, we maybe should have paid more attention to this because this Nexus 7 turns out to be a pretty big deal. But then yeah. uh, they clobbered us uh, with Chromecast, uh, which nobody had... Well, I guess we kind of knew there was going to be a Google TV something, but what a shock. So uh, let's start with Chromecast and we'll get back to the uh, Nexus 7. Um, Dan, were you surprised by this? Yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing that, you know, you want Google to kind of come out with something that surprises you at this point because their other offerings have been kind of, you know, when it, they did little experiments with a little ball that had the... Well, this know, is the successor to the Q, which right. was... Nev they never even tried to sell it. It was such a horrible idea. But so you've got this thing and this is plugged in. You're using this now. Right yeah. At your house. It's not... Uh, okay, so let's... Uh, so to me, it's more potential than reality, right? Okay. So right now... Tim, do you have a Chromecast? Did you get one? Uh, no, I did not get one, but I've definitely been reading about it closely. And interestingly, we actually had pictures at Engadget of this guy about two months ago. Oh, interesting. But we didn't know what it was, and we didn't actually see the, the port end of it. We only saw the other end of it. So we were trying to figure out what a Chrome <laughs> USB key would be. We were thinking maybe it was like Chrome OS on a USB key that you could plug in and run from anywhere. But we couldn't, we couldn't connect all the dots, so we didn't run with it. Uh, but now it's interesting to see that it's actually an HDMI port on the end, not uh, not a USB port. Like it thought. looks like a thumb drive with a bulge. It does. That's what we uh, thought it was at in first. Instead of the USB port, though, there's an HDMI port. Mm -hmm. On the other end, there's a micro USB port. You do need that for power. It is not an MHL. I verified this. It is not an MHL HDMI port, so you can't power it from an MHL port. But, you know, that means it works with every HDMI uh, television or monitor. Um, it It is, in its conception maybe a little confusing you might look at that and say oh that must be an android like an android usb stick mm -hmm. it's not apparently runs chrome os and supports a uh, protocol called dial which is not new in fact it, it, as far as i can tell and we were just talking with our sysadmin bear who's looked kind of into it it is um pretty much open through and through they've offered an api and an sdk that they really did it in a very interesting way they slowly revealed how open it was. At first, it sounded like, oh, this is just going to be a Google Play music right. playing device. Right. Then they said, and we've got to deal with Netflix. Oh, okay, so they had a partnership. Mm -hmm. And then they said, and maybe and Pandora's coming. Okay, well, maybe two partnerships. And it's open, and we're going to give you an API and SDK, and anybody could Chromecast enable anything. And that's when I thought this could be a deal changer. But the biggest story is it's $35. Mm -hmm. And... For about three seconds, came with three months of Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> then a million people bought them, and that was the end of that. Yeah, yeah. I think they must have had a deal with Netflix that said something like, uh, "We'll give a million. I've, a million's the number that le leaps to mind. We'll give a million people mm -hmm. three months free of Netflix, even if you're an existing customer. By the way, I was able to extend my subscription by three months. Um, 
And then they sold a million. <laughs> and they said, mm. oops. <laughs> so literally within a couple of days, they said, no more. That's it. Uh, it's still at 35 bucks a good deal, but it was an amazing deal when you got $24 with Netflix. So here's why I'm excited about it. Because uh, on the surface, all it really does is, and it's the first thing is, it's not a streamer. So Apple TV with AirPlay, uh, or even now AirPlay on Mountain Lion uh, going to an Apple TV, you take what's on your screen, squish it down, send it via Wi-Fi to the Apple TV, which then plays it on the device. Mm -hmm. The, the Chromecast can do that. They say that's in beta. It could take any tab from Chrome, if you have the extension, and play it. So it could be a web page. It could be video. But that's not what it's primarily supposed to do. What it does is this dial handoff where the device, and it could be um, a, a laptop running Chrome, uh, an Android phone, Android tablet, and soon iOS. Mm -hmm. Not yet, but soon iOS. Um, if you run Netflix, for instance, on an Android... I was able to get my iPad to work. You were? With Netflix. Oh, so Netflix has been updated for iOS. Right. So the key is that the mm -hmm. app developer has to update their app. So what happens when you run Netflix, uh, I'll do it on the Nexus 7, is if there's a Chromecast device in the on the Wi-Fi network, there's a Chromecast button on Netflix. You go to Netflix, you browse it, you find your movie, then you press the Chromecast button. It says, which Chromecast? So you can have multiple Chromecasts in the house. Mm -hmm. You say, I want the one in the living room. And then when you play the movie on Netflix on your tablet, it signals the Chromecast, okay, he wants to play this movie. The Chromecast does the work. It maintains a connection with the device for control, playback, rewind, fast forward, and volume. Um, but it, uh, but you could turn the... Uh, so it's not streaming from your device. It's not. It's you could turn the device off. Right. It from the and this was actually one of the frustrations that we had with the Nexus Q uh, because that device couldn't actually play any content from your local network. And it, it seemed like that would be something that people would want to do on that device since it would be a high-end, you know, high-quality qu audio device. But it couldn't actually play from your local network, which for a $300 audio streamer was a bit of a bummer. But obviously for $35, bucks, uh, definitely willing to overlook that. So Chad's pressing the Chromecast button there on his Android phone. He sees Chromecast... 7207, you can rename that. And it's now going to go to that Chromecast and play. Um, does this with YouTube. Right now, YouTube, Google Play, two Google properties, mm -hmm. uh, Net, uh, Netflix, as soon Pandora. But we've already talked to uh, Houdini7, the developer of the Twit app, for instance. He says he's ena enabling it on the Twit app. So uh, right. you'd be able to launch the Twit app, press Chromecast, and then play through the Chromecast. Can you stream from a device, though? You can. Okay. You, can scream at, you can stream any Chrome tab, mm -hmm. which means a web page or video, but it's not going to, but it's it's got limitations, 720p maximum video. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to compress it a lot, and you have to send it through the Wi-Fi. So, yes, it can do that, but I don't think it's primarily what it is. What's interesting is that it's an, op it's, it's an open platform. So what will really determine whether this, th I think it's worth 35 bucks just for those things, mm -hmm. but... What will really make this a value is if other companies, for instance, I'm dying to see Amazon put this on Amazon streaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Then it then that's huge. That single thing would make it huge. Well, just having a device that you could do Amazon and uh, and Netflix. Right. I don't think any, Apple will make iTunes Chromecast compatible. Probably not. <laughs> not in the future. I think we could pretty much bet on that. Yeah. Uh, I'm a bit bummed that they didn't add in Miracast support. Uh, Google made a big deal about adding Miracast, Miracast support right into the OS and Android 4.2, and they said they were going to spread it across their devices, but ultimately we haven't really heard anything about Miracast. What is Miracast? 4.2. Miracast is basically the successor of Wi-Fi Direct, or basically a uh. rebranding of it. So it's wireless video over HDMI. So it, it's compatible with laptops and with a lot of other devices, too. And it would have made this an even more powerful, more useful device if you could also connect your laptop to it and stream any video from it. You could run presentations on it. You can do anything you want to. I hope Google will add that into this. And if it's running Chrome OS, they certainly could without too much trouble. Um, but but since the, Google hasn't really talked about it since they added to 4.2, uh, I, I would have liked to see it uh, added in here. But again, for 35 bucks, I uh, can't complain too much. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about the price, then it's it's such a no-brainer given the price. Right. For 100 bucks, it doesn't compare That's well with Roku or Apple TV. Right. Uh, it doesn't do what they do. It's not as sophisticated. But 35 bucks, it's almost an impulse purchase. Uh, it totally is. Yeah. And I then... Mean, there's a few people in, who are listening to the show who can't come up with 35 bucks to spend to just try something like this. Especially Now, is it, 
Are you saying that this thing is good enough right now? Do you think that they that somebody who's thinking should I get an Apple TV? Should I get a Roku? Uh, that's a good question. Should I get this? Is, no. is it in line with those? As I far would as wait and see if a third how third party support is. There's rumors that there's HBO Go is working on it, and that would be that, that would, would be make huge. sense. That would be huge. Um, and why not? Why, and why not? They? Why wouldn't NFL? Why it's, wouldn't yeah. NBA Major League MLB. Baseball? Why wouldn't uh, they have to be NBA? There. They of course they if it's easy if it's and I, I gather it's fairly easy. It's open. Um, why wouldn't you do it? So I've got, and especially since now we know it's sold quite well, mm -hmm. it's out of stock everywhere. Now, mm -hmm. they could have had 50,000 units. Who knows? Now, but. this is only direct from Google where you were getting this, or could you? No, I got it on Amazon. That's Amazon. how I got it so fast. Okay. They had Amazon overnight. Same thing with the Nexus 7. Uh, Staples, Best Buy, other uh, big box stores had it, apparently. But they're all sold out. They're all sold out. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we've seen this before. That doesn't mean anything. We don't. That doesn't tell you anything. That uh, anybody who has an Android app streaming video will probably update their app very soon and, and ultimately make it compatible with this. So I, I would think that anything that's already on Android will be playable through this in the very near future, probably within a few months. Uh, and that right there would be, you know, a huge suite of functionality. If you don't have one of the newer smart TVs and you aren't really looking to buy a new TV, this is, you know, a great way to add that functionality. It's in many ways a better experience than a smart TV. I mean, I've tried every smart TV uh, and they're all clunky. Yeah, they're getting better, but there's still a long way to go. And nothing is as easy to use as Android. Right. I mean, not that Android is a fantastic experience, but it sure beats kind of clicking through menus with your remote control on your TV. If you can swipe through, especially because you could be watching TV while you're selecting the next thing to watch on your tablet, which right there is a real nice experience. So here's what I did this morning. I'm lying in bed. I got my Nexus 7. Um, I have an app that communicates with my AV receiver where the Chromecast is plugged in. Because mm -hmm. you have, it, it will support CEC. So if you have it on a CEC port uh, on your TV, it will automatically change to the right input. Otherwise you have to change the AV receiver to that input. So I did that. I launched Google Play. I started a radio stream and I sent it to the stereo and I'm listening to the music. It sounds great. It's 1080p on uh, Netflix. Mm -hmm. Just for those two things alone, I'm happy. 35 bucks. For 35 bucks, yeah. I'm happy. And... Uh, I did get three months of Netflix. By the way, there's been some question about if you bought more than one, and many people did, apparently. I bought five. Sorry. I wow. Did. I bought yours. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know it would run out so fast. Um, but I gathered when I applied the... Uh, I, I applied the first code, and then I tried to apply the second. It said, you can't have consecutive codes running. But I gathered that I could probably wait three months and apply the second one. So I think I'm going to have 15 months free oh, Netflix. Nice. <laughs> nice. Did you see that there's already been an exploit on this thing? No, they hacked it? Yeah, there's a link uh, that I found on uh, Engadget that says it only took a couple days and that's for it to be exploited. It's open, right? Yes. Uh, but if you want, there's a site called GTV Hacker that explains how to do it. <laughs> and you can it confirms the software within is not Chrome OS. It's described as a modified Google TV release, but with all of the Bionic, the Bionic Dalvik stripped out and replaced with a single binary for Chromecast. Oh, interesting. Huh. Very it's not, it's not, they kind of implied it was Chrome OS. Yeah, I thought that's what it was. Hmm. Um, so, uh, very interesting. Hmm. When you say hack, do they mean maliciously or just I think you can, send other you, streams you can get to a, it? Or? You can get a root shell <laughs> on port 23 and uh, nice. now you can investigate what it's that. actually doing. All right, I'm nice. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, I've got a shell open on my TV. GTV hacker. Yeah. Dot com. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think this is a big product from Google. I mean, somebody pointed out that, of course, this means Google can watch everything you watch. Mm -hmm. But what? I don't really care. Uh, and I guess if you don't, you shouldn't use it. If you do, you shouldn't use it. But uh, presumably... Well, Netflix can see most of the stuff we watch and Amazon can ISP see most of the stuff. can. I mean, uh, everybody can. So who cares, right? People really care about that. They though. do. Like they Bugs really don't want anyone knowing, you know, what movie they watched on Friday night. Like it really bothers people <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why. Like, oh, do, is that because they're, they're learning our habits? Well, so they're watching everything we search for. You're using the internet. So everyone knows everything. Yeah. It's no secrets yeah. anymore. Google says they're going to continue to do a Google TV. They say this is not Google TV and they're going to continue to do Google TV, which nobody buys anyway. So who cares? Um, I, I don't know what this replaces. I don't know if it replaces Roku. Eventually, it could. Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt it replaces Apple TV because that's going to be the only way you can watch iTunes. Forever, yeah. Forever. Right. Um, and, and there were quite a few of these 
uh, HDMI stick devices coming out, running Android or running some simple right. OS, just to provide the same kind of functionality. So if anything, this is pretty much Google kind of wiping out that that entire market and taking it over themselves. The low cost HDMI stick. Uh, it is a bit of a bummer that it isn't self powered. That's the only drawback I've seen compared to some of the other ones. But uh, right. you know, I don't think there was a lot of money going or, or, or getting made in that market yet. But ultimately, none of them had the exposure that this one certainly will. So uh, it's an interesting play. I don't think Google's going to make a lot of money on this. But uh, but again, if Google's looking to sell more content. So this is a really great way to do it. Well, and isn't that, and this is where I, f I find most interesting in the long run uh, in terms of the markets. That's one of the advantages both Google and Amazon have. They don't need to make money on their hardware. Apple, uh, Asus, other companies need to, their hardware oh, yeah. companies, they, yeah, Microsoft, hardware companies. they got to make money on their products. But Google and, a and Amazon can sell for cost because they're, they make all their money downstream later. Mm. And if Google could sell you a, a device at cost that gives them lots of information about what you watch on TV so they can then put ads in your email or whatever, right. it's worth it for them. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're taking a loss on this or is it break even or you think they're making it? Well, a you know what, what immediately I le leapt to is what does a Raspberry Pi cost? Just about the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like a fully configured Raspberry Pi. I would, you know, we'll have to see the teardowns. It's a Marvell chip inside. It's an ARM7 uh, Marvell um, uh, Micron uh, Flash NAND. There's two gigs of Flash NAND, five twelve megs of Micron RAM. Um, the probably the most expensive part would be the radio, 802.11 BGN Bluetooth, uh, Azure Wave radio. Because um, it makes its own little Wi-Fi hotspot. So yeah, you connect to. It's cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's very cool. Um, but that's somewhat like a Raspberry Pi. So I'm I'm guessing it's somewhere in that. You know, they might make a few bucks on mm -hmm. it. Um, so I, I, don't, I doubt that they're making any money on it, but I don't think they need to. Similarly, I don't think Amazon makes money, particularly on the Kindle, but they don't need to. Mm -hmm. They even said that. They said that the, the business is not making money on the Kindle. The business is making money every time you use the Kindle. Right. <laughs> All right. So that's part one uh, of the Google announcement. They also announced uh, Android 4.3 and uh, a new tablet. Um, and we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Dan Benjamin's here, 5x5.tv, the great network. Uh, Tim Stevens, former editor-in-chief at Engadget. He's uh, now uh, blogging <laughs> at Digital. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have the ha -ha wasn't good. He's always, always a blogger he's now. A, he's in his jammies <laughs> in the basement, and he's blogging. <laughs> I am. It's true. <laughs> and race. This is what my jammies look like. It's surprisingly comfortable. That's good. Pin straight jammies. Uh, Digitaldisplacement.com. More to come in just a bit. But first, a word from our friends at Citrix. GoToMeeting.com. Summer is here. This is the time uh, when it's so hard to get together uh, people you work with or potential clients. And yet, you know, business does not stop just because we're in the middle of the, uh, the dog days of summer. GoToMeeting lets you meet with those people. Get the job done. Uh, break through the uh, log jams, pitch. Uh, and it's great because even though you may be on vacation or you're out by the pool or you're at the ball game, you can use your iPad to present. You can listen to the headphones, use the microphone. You can see people face to face because they've got now built in HD video conferencing. You're sharing screens. It really is great. Meetings are shorter, but more productive, more efficient. You can get back to the fun. And the best part about GoToMeeting is one flat rate for as many meetings as you want, as often as you want, as long as you want. I know teams that actually keep GoToMeeting running because they're in different locations. It's kind of their back channel to one another. We're, we're, we're working on using it. We're going to do a programming show. I think it's going to be a perfect way to do a programming show where you can see the screen, you can see the hosts, but you can see what they're typing directly. It's fabulous. I want you to try it free. Visit GoToMeeting.com. Click the orange Try It Free button. Use our promo code TWIT. You'll get 30 days free go to meeting go to meeting.com promo code is twit we don't we don't do uh conference calls anymore we do go to meeting even if we're not going to be on the phone on you know sh sharing screen we're going to be on the phone it's just the easiest way to do it set it up so uh anything to say about android 4.3 they've added i think uh, aiming at an education market they've added multi-users which is great something ipad mm -hmm. does not have mm -hmm. That right there, for people, I think, uh, especially like me, if you have kids and your kids are constantly, you 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 have to dedicate an entire device just to the right. child. Each child has to right. have their own device. Otherwise, you completely lose control of it. Right. And, and, and there's kids, the there's kids uh, safety locks. Mm -hmm. So they showed in the uh, presentation 
some game where you know you could buy more fish. And instead of just, and, <laughs> right. and, and I, I guess if the mean. game is aware of the safety lock, it'd have to be. Instead of showing the fish that you could buy and saying, but you can't buy it, kid, they don't even show it, which is great. So, mm -hmm. you uh, you know, they don't show other, so that's, so it's kid friendly, mm -hmm. a school friendly. You can have one tablet or two tablets in a class and mm -hmm. the individual logins. They've also apparently added uh, trim to the OS, which is big because the uh, last Nexus 7, I noticed this, a lot of people reported it got slower and slower. Turns out it was because the uh, of uh, uh, you know NAND memory starts to as you use it become uh, less than optimal, slows down quite a bit. Putting trim in cleans it up, and uh, apparently when it's asleep and in the, on the charger, it secretly goes in and, <laughs> and trims it. And I noticed almost immediately the next the old Nexus Seven was back to full speed. Mm. Um, there's some other features in four three. It's not a huge. It's still I. It's still a jelly bean. It hasn't. It's not a huge upgrade, um, but it does. It does seem faster in some ways. To me, though, the really. I to me. I, at first, I ignored it because we'd heard it all. But when I actually got an Nexus Seven, I'm excited about this. This is a. This. This is. Okay. Here's the deal. Apple said, and you know, when Apple released the iPad Mini, they didn't say anything. But everybody, I said, well, I'm disappointed. It's 1024 by 768. I don't want it. I ended up buying it and using it all the time. Mm -hmm. But I was mad. So why can't you do a retina? And everybody told me, oh, Leo, don't be stupid. You can't have a retina on a device like this and, and make it $339 and the battery life would be terrible. Right. Don't be dumb. Always a battery life. Yeah, battery life would suffer. Don't be dumb. Apple couldn't do it. And then we're hearing rumors that Apple's not even going to update the iPad mini till next year right, next because year. you can't do it. So, so along comes Google with the highest resolution 7-inch display ever, 323 dots per inch. That's retina, baby. Uh, it's beautiful. Battery life has not taken a hit. In fact, it might even be arguably a little bit longer. It's 9 or 10 hours uh, than it used to be. Um, this is not slow. This is a, they, they're using, a, uh, I think, a S4 Pro chip in here. It's great. It's beautiful. Is this, is this, it's got a five megapixel camera, just like the iPad mini. Mm -hmm. I can't, uh, the only reason at this point I could even tell people buy a $110 more, more expensive mini is if you're already, I guess, if you're in the Apple ecosystem yeah, where Apple there's ecosystem. apps you have to but, have. But, you know, for people who are, who are in that, it's, it's, they just have to wait for Apple. And, and I know so many people who, they really are invested in a really, really big way in the Apple ecosystem. All of their movies are there. All of their music yeah. is in the cloud. You know, they've already got an investment in apps, and this is the this is the space that they live in. So it's almost, it's not yet to the point where you could show them an Android device, no matter how fast it is, no matter how great, and the screen does look great on it's this. It's gorgeous. Uh, no matter how great the screen looks, and show it to them and say, oh, this is this is a selling point for you because look at the screen, battery life, is it whatever. For, it's still a non, they're still not going to talk to you about it because they've got that investment. I know lots of people like that. I know lots of people who are in, invested in, you know, in the Android ecosystem as well. Would but, you, would you, I mean, if somebody isn't invested at all. Yeah. Somebody says, I, you know, I, I want a tablet. What should I get? Seems like it'd be hard not good. to say. The screen does look good. This looks really good. Yeah, it does. Dan, just touch yeah. it. You're I don't gonna... know why anybody <laughs> would start with anything other than this. That's I actually good. just got it's my good. mother her first tablet, and I got her the old Nexus Seven. <clears throat> Unfortunately, just a couple of months ago, but that's that's the way things go. Uh, but you know, it's a great tablet. It's the the right size for a casual tablet user. It's really easy to carry around. It's easy to read on. You know, it's comfortable and light, and, and the battery life is great for sure. The only slight reservation I have with this is that they did raise the price a bit up to two twenty nine. <clears throat> but two twenty nine for this. I know it's still cheap, but crossing over that $200 barrier, I think, does take it out of the kind of impulse, obvious buy territory just a little bit. I, I wish that they hadn't bothered with the camera on the back and dropped the price a bit because of that, because I don't think that I'm going to be using it that much. I don't know about you guys. Um, <laughs> I use it for this, and let me tell you something. That is worth <laughs> yeah, an extra $10 right there. Right, I can that's, see that. That's worth 30 bucks. <laughs> um, I also wish that's the auto awesome, the by the way, for yeah, Google Plus. Say again? Um, I also wish that Google kept the old Nexus 7 around. It's off the site already, and I'm I guessing know. that you know once stock sells out, it's gone. I wish they'd kept that around at 150 because even at Make 150, it cheap. that's a great tablet. Make it cheap. I actually think that iOS 7 is, as, as much as people in the Apple community are talking about it being a really great opportunity for uh, for iOS developers to to kind of 
come out with a new app and maybe knock out some of the deeply entrenched apps that are there. And by saying, well, I have a brand new iOS 7 app that's really amazing, that's better than this other one that hasn't been updated for iOS 7 yet. In the same way that that's an opportunity, I think this is also an opportunity for, for people to maybe consider Android people who are saying, I don't know if I really like iOS 7 or if I'm going to switch to something different, maybe I should look at an Android device. I don't know. I, I think for I a lot think of people... I think this is going to be huge for them. I you know, really and I always, I, Leo, I always go back to, to my mom who's N number one thing she's like she doesn't want to spend too much money right like she does you know she what what tablet should i get and i'll say well you know it's too expensive you know what yeah it's Dan, too, it's too expensive it's a macintosh yeah. it's too expensive that's right and so dan I, do i look like i'm made with money dan <laughs> and, and she'll you know and if you don't like it you can go live with your father <laughs> so she has uh that's You're not for living the, with your the mom. listeners no, no that was when i was a kid and uh it, you know, but but that's the thing. Like for her, she'll go to like she'll go to like an Office Depot and she'll look at what they have, and like that's what she would consider that. And I'd say, well, you know, have you looked at the Apple Store too? And she's like, yeah, but it's it's fifty dollars more, it's a hundred dollars right. more, and that for many many people is they're comparing two devices that seem very similar. Right? Why would they do that if they're not already invested? So I would argue at this point. I'm against, by the way, I'm very sympathetic because I get that call a lot on the radio show. I, don't, I want a computer and I don't want to spend more than $300. It's like, don't, stop, just don't. Throw, you're throwing your money away, don't. Um, and uh, people just don't understand that, well, it's a computer, I see it, it's on the screen, mm -hmm. it's on the store, it's the same as a, what is the difference between that and an $800 computer? I don't understand it. It's going to break, it's a piece of crap. But you can't explain that to them. It's 500 bucks makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. This is, a, I would argue, a little bit different situation. This is actually better than an iPad mini in every respect. Um, and I think, frankly, Apple's going to have a very hard time if they don't update the mini this year. It the, looks like they're not going to. And it doesn't look like they're going to, although we don't know. Nobody really knows. But see, I'm one of the people who I've got so much invested in the Apple ecosystem. I don't, you know, I hear me, that, I'm, but I'm you I'm could staying, replace I'm all staying. those apps unless there's apps... Well, content too. You got. I mean, all of my movies. I get. I don't say that all, would be most different. Most through iTunes. That would be different. You've, music you is don't, on You're the buying cloud. movies. Well, music's not a problem. You just move it over. And there's Spotify for that also. Yeah. Well, and I use Google Music. See, and uh, mm -hmm. this is like Spotify. I got the seven ninety nine a month, and I'm getting uh, right. The same. Basically, I think it's basically the same selection. But yeah, we buy all of it, like especially with my kids, that we buy everything through iTunes. Every yeah. movie, like every you movie. own them, you don't rent them, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll we use Netflix for like the the crap, you know, kid movies, right. and then like when a newer one comes out that they want, we get it in iTunes. I, you know, I've kind of moved over to Amazon at this point for that very reason. I don't mm -hmm. want to be tied too tightly to the. And I have an Apple TV. I'm an all Mac guy. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of iPads, but I just don't want to be tied into that. Um, what do you think, Tim? For a on the conversation about. People don't spend enough. They think they really see these low price products and they say, well, that's good enough. Yeah, that's definitely a concern. But but you're absolutely right in this case. This I mean, this is a, a fantastic device for a fantastic value. The Nexus 7 last year was a great device for two hundred dollars. And it, right. in a lot of ways back then it was was better than the iPad mini or certainly certainly comparable. You can make the case that it was a better choice for a lot of people. Right. But now with the high resolution screen and the better performance, uh, and the other features that are coming in, Android 4.3, especially if you've got kids at home, like you mentioned before, uh, it's, it's definitely a great buy. And uh, I don't see why anybody would really, if you're a casual user again and you don't really need a 10-inch tablet, I don't see why anybody would really think about going with much of anything else at this point, except again, if you've got the content tie-in. And, and I'm kind of in the same boat, but, but I definitely have shifted more away from from purchasing content toward renting content, just because I'm, I'm really afraid of anything that I buy at this point isn't going to be right. playable in even three or four years, regardless of which horse I, I pick. I think going with Amazon is probably the safer bet in the long run. I'd agree with you there, Leo. But, uh, but iTunes and Google Play, I don't really know that. Uh, you know, I don't know where those guys are going to be in three years. I know where my Blu-ray collection is going to be in three years, uh, but I don't know uh, necessarily where uh, well, that's, my iTunes downloads will be. That's a good question because I looked at. I was going to buy the complete Sopranos. And I thought, well, I looked at the Blu-ray. It's about 200 bucks for the complete DVD, not for Blu-ray, but the right. complete DVD. Uh, maybe it's 200 bucks for the Blu-ray, too. Uh, and I looked on Amazon streaming, 200 bucks for the com all six seasons. Mm -hmm. Now, on the one hand, the convenience of having this and not having a physical media is great. I don't want to buy another, any more Blu-ray discs. But, but you're right. I mean, what, is that, what, are the, what are the rights that I have to this? They're going to go away at some point. Yeah. If I die, I can't hand my Amazon account over to my heirs. Mm-hmm. 
And there is, of course, ultraviolet, which hopefully will make things a little bit easier in that regard. Uh, but again, it's really tied to kind of traditional media and the traditional means of buying things. Um, I just got the Bond 50th anniversary collection. Me too. Not that long I got ago, that on which DVD. Is, yeah. Which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but again, it's something that I could see myself wanting to watch in a couple of years. And, uh, you know, whether or not I'm going to want to have a Blu-ray player hooked up in a couple of years, who knows. Um, but certainly I do right now still feel a little bit safer in physical media, which is, which is you know, a little bit weird for me to say. I even feel a bit uncomfortable saying that, to be honest. I know. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to buy into physical media anymore. But if you don't have a book, if you don't have a disc, if you don't have a cassette or eight track, what do you have? Yeah, I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, I was talking to Jason Snell and Andy Nako about comics and digital digital comics. You know, perfect example. And both of these guys, they're, they're old school comic right. book collectors, like I used to be, and they were telling me. Oh man, you know, we're both all digital. Everything that we do within the wow. comic space is all digital. And I was like, you guys are crazy. You don't bag and board anymore. And and they're like, no, what, what are you doing? That's ancient history. <laughs> bag and board yeah. right there. That tells you everything you need that to know. That everything you friends. need to know. And but but you know what? Like I made that transition myself away to, from doing that. So I I but I love the fact that, you know, I can be in a hotel room and I can say, okay, what movie am I gonna watch when I go back to, you know, on the flight back? And I can just rent it or download it. You can do that with so any convenient. device. But the idea of like, oh, I have a physical DVD. I need to handbrake it now and I need to get it over here and I need yeah. to remember to sync. And now that's an hour of my time additional on the trip that I need to set aside just to be able to watch a movie or I can download it. Like yeah. I'm going to download it. And that's where Netflix and Amazon Instant uh, are, are just out of the question is that I'm on a plane Right. scenario so you've got mm -hmm. to rent or buy in right. that but you've got we've got options now i just still I, I mean i really wish and everybody wishes this that that there was um there wasn't this marriage between the 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 device and the content and that's the the scary part regardless of you know which device you're using especially in the case of Apple. maybe we have to rethink our relationship to content i mean we certainly are tied in from years of experience to the notion that if you buy a book you've got it it's on your bookshelf mm -hmm. you're going to hand it down but maybe that isn't really the way content needs to live in the future maybe it's more ephemeral than that maybe that's an old-fashioned way of thinking of content like if the content somehow becomes cheap enough that instead of paying you know 10 or 20 or 30 bucks for a book or a right. dvd if it's a buck rent it when you need it rent it when you need it and then it goes away and, then and if, you, if you you don't have to hand it down to your kid your kid spends a buck when they want to watch do we really gain anything by having boxes full of crap that our kids are going to have to throw out anyway yeah like I, 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 you know <laughs> now like, i'm an older guy it. than you i'm faced with this you see um it's not good to have a lot of stuff in your life yeah aren't aren't we uh, isn't Bits doing us a favor? I wish that we could buy content directly from publishers, and then it would basically be up to them to, to find ways for us to get that content on our new devices down the road. But we always had to buy it from publishers through some other means, whether it be iTunes or, or watch it through Netflix or something like that. Uh, if I could just go directly to the music label or directly to the movie house or directly to whoever actually owns the content itself and buy a license directly from them, and then you know effectively trust that they would then manage that license and allow me to get that content down the road, that to me would be a much better solution. Or you know ideally. Ideally, I would just go and pay, you know, pay Sony twenty dollars a month to have unlimited access to every movie and every everything that they've ever made, and then just keep paying them twenty bucks a month till the you know till the end of time. That would be pretty nice to me. I'm honestly ready to move away from ownership altogether because ultimately, you know, the the, the concept that you own something on a CD is obviously wrong. You didn't actually own anything except for the plastic disc. Now we've gotten rid of the plastic disc, and it's getting harder to get that content as you go from device to device. If we could just get away from ownership altogether and have much better plans for leasing or, or renting this stuff that for me would be a much better solution i you know i'm probably the wrong person to ask because i don't really i rarely reread a book re-watch a movie re-watch a tv show when i want to watch godfather i don't mind renting it again mm -hmm. there are very few sh movies that are good enough but i know there are a lot of kind of uh, OCD people like uh, like Andy Anako and Dan Benjamin who I rewatch movies. I, do re <laughs> I just movies. knew that you were a, yes, a movie rewatch. I do. I do rewatch them. There's certain ones I rewatch over and over. Yeah. Uh, so you want to own the sound? You of You want to own those because and because it's just the sound of music. Yes, good. the sound of music. And my kids, uh, they have movies where you know you've had uh, young kids before that where they they watch the same movie multiple kids, times for a sure. week. Yeah, mm. kids um, for sure. So what I did is uh, this was back in the VHS era because i'm again that old i took bambi i edited out the scene where uh ba there's no spoilers no here spoilers but there's thing. some bad stuff happens to bambi's you edited mother that out. 
I literally edited that out and then put it back on a VHS cassette because <laughs> I didn't want my kids to be traumatized. It made the movie a little strange. Like, where'd Bambi's mother go? She's like, what happened? Right. But they, they were young. They didn't know any better. I never understood why Walt put that in that movie. That was a horrible moment. And I still cry sometimes at night when I think about it. <laughs> Did they ever figure that out? Did they figure out how it's actually no. supposed to end? Still they to never. Day. It doesn't end. It's the movie goes on after <laughs> Bambi's mom goes away. The movie continues. But you just, I just cut that mm -hmm. part out. They and you know what? They, they never knew know. better. They still don't know today what happened. Still don't know today. <laughs> and if they're watching, I'm sorry, kids. Um, but I could do that because we owned physical media. Yeah. I could probably could not do that if it were on iTunes. I might. I could rip it. I don't you know. could skip the scene. Just fast forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. How do you st stand on the Bambi? Never mind. <laughs> 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 See, you, uh, on, on Andy Yanako's Almanac, he could talk about that stuff. Yes, that could be a whole show. That's a whole show mm -hmm. right there. That's a whole show. Bambi's mom. Mm -hmm. We did a show just on the opening credits of the Temple of Doom once. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Which is a good show. Really Andy good show. actually said, he said, look, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm going to give you first rights of refusal. I want to do a show about nothing. I said, go ahead, call Dan. That's fine. Uh -huh. Is that how he pitched it to you? That's excellent. <laughs> I said, Dan would be great for yeah, that show. Thanks. You go right ahead, Dan. You have Any that. other shows you don't want to do, the, let me know. The, I'm, the here. I'm here. Anako's Almanac. For I'm here for you. 100%. It's a good it's a show. show. It is a good show. I, but I, but again, I think not for me because uh, we've tried, you know, we've tried uh, lifestyle geek culture shows. They don't do that well on our network. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's great that you that he does that on your network because I love listening to him. Highly recommend it, by mm -hmm. the way. 5 by 5tv TV. It's called Thank you. Anatko's Almanac, among 35 other shows. Mm -hmm. I love the Syracuse show. Yeah. He is such an ass. I mean, not ass in a bad way. Uh -huh. He's just bitter. He's a bitter man. That was a good show. It's a great... He doesn't do it's that over. anymore? No, he's, oh. he retired. He, re he did his run. You know, he did he his said, thing. He, he did it. He still is on some other shows uh, all around the internet, but he, uh, he he complained about everything he had to complain He about. got it out of his system. Got it out of his system, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Cleared show. out the pipe. So he, he was, was just bitter, bitter man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he could talk... He could easily talk about one... And another thing. ...little thing for a long time. <laughs> and another thing. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite right now that you're doing? Well, I mean, I, I, You're, all of them are your babies. All of them are my favorite shows. Every one I of them. I, that I I'm ever jealous get to that be you on. have Merlin Mann. Back to work. Back to work is the a ladies, great show. The ladies love Merlin Mann. I love Merlin Mann. Everyone. Loves I Merlin. would be a lady if I, he wanted me to. Whatever he wants. Yeah. Wow. But no, he doesn't like me anymore. I no, I don't think that's true. Something happened. He's never said anything. We had bad. a breach. <laughs> <laughs> like a like a breach birth. <laughs> we had a breach. I shouldn't have kissed him that one. That was the. <laughs> It wasn't the kiss. It might have been the tongue. But anyway, okay. it's it, whatever it's Better, over. Well, that's a wonderful uh, show to do. Was, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's a good job. <laughs> Our show today brought to you, and they're wondering why, by Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> they're saying, let's buy more time on 5x5. Five five. Uh, you'd have Squarespace? Yes. Uh, Great we company. Definitely have they are amazing. Do you and, love them? Uh, I do love them. And what the way you need to, am I doing this? I'll do this. We'll do it together. We'll if you do want. it. Too. We'll tag team this tag one. Team. The, the, it is the all-in-one place to go to make a website, and you can do any anything in the world with their website. So it doesn't even it doesn't even matter what you want to do. You want to do a blog, Leo? You can Perfect. do that. Tim could open his blog up on uh, on portfolio. Space. If you want to do a portfolio of old Toyotas, just like great Definitely full do that. the momentum, uh, full bleed. Template be perfect for that, Tim. Just mm -hmm. big pictures of, of gearboxes. No, I'm saying? sure it's a my beautiful view. <laughs> you can do image galleries, and what's really cool when you go to Squarespace.com, you can see all of you can see these great examples. They have these yeah, great like videos that, that they've done yeah. showing you how people, whether they're illustrators, whether they're photographers, whether they're bloggers, or you know they even have examples that show you how like a restaurant could use it. They have examples of how you can do it with a business. And the thing that you need to know about Squarespace is that it's you don't need to know CSS, you don't need to know HTML. All of their templates are responsive. All you but need you're to, a web developer. In a past, have you played with the Have you played with the developers platform? Because that's have. pretty sweet. And you can, and that's an important. You don't thing have to know, know it, it, but you if you do exactly, the sky's the limit. Yeah, if you know what you're doing and you want to get under the hood, you totally can. Yeah. And if you're just like a regular person who's doing something else but knows you want to do a website, you can drag and drop. You can customize every single setting just with little sliders. It's amazing. And, have uh, you now? So let me ask you this, because you're a Squarespace expert. Responsive. We have never been able to bring a Squarespace site down, and we've done it. We've sent the Twit Army oh, you bring, off. Yeah. 
we bring sites down routinely. Mm -hmm. um, Squarespace, I think it's because the CMS, the software, is very tightly integrated to the server software. Mm -hmm. It's all it's all running on a Java platform, I believe. And uh, they just they can turn on more bandwidth faster than you can blink. Yeah, on. So you never bring down a site. There's no way you're going to bring down. Try. Go to, you know what, inside.twit.tv, our blog. Try to go ahead. Just everybody, all, if everybody goes there right now, and let's see if we can just bring it down. Inside, I'm going to go there. You go there. Everybody go watching at home, go there. It's still Inside.twit.tv. Let's see if we can bring it down. I, we can't. I know we can't. We've done this before. So here's the deal. If you want to try it, you can. The other thing I really like about Squarespace, I love it when our sponsors say, hey, just try it. No credit card needed. That's, that shows confidence, right? Yes. We don't, all you got to do is name your site, give us an email in case you forget your password, make up a password. You got two weeks, run to the place. You can do anything you want, even import your existing content. Mm -hmm. They have uh, blog importers from all the major APIs. All them, yeah, that's very cool. Even comments and images, all the SEO and links are preserved, the whole thing. Play with it for two weeks. In fact, they even told me, they said, you know what, if you've got like uh, a wedding coming up in two weeks and you wanted a blog just for people going to the wedding, but you don't want to pay for it. Just do it for two weeks, and then that's it. And mm -hmm. you don't have to ever pay us. But if you decide you want to keep it around longer than two weeks, we've got some very good deals for you. Visit squarespace.com and take a look at the different plans so you know what you're going for. If you want to do e-commerce, it's 24 bucks a month. They don't take a cut, by the way. It's not like, you know, you have unlimited uh, digital or physical assets. You can, yeah, sell a book and an e-book, e a CD or an MP3. Um, they will do things like inventory tracking for you. They calculate the tax, the shipping. You can have arbitrary number of coupons. You know, if you're on Twit, you say, I want to give a Twit listeners a coupon. Easy to do. Just a couple of clicks. Uh, 24 bucks a month, and that includes unlimited bandwidth, storage, pages, galleries, and blogs. 16 bucks a month if you don't want the uh, e-commerce. That's for the uh, yearly plan. By the way, when you get a yearly plan, they also hook up the custom domain name for free. Um, I'm just a big fan. Give it a try. We will give you a little break. You can use our offer code TWIT7. Um, we want to check out some of the sites you've built with Squarespace. So send us a tweet with your uh, Squarespace website. Hashtag it TWIT Squarespace. TWIT Squarespace. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and a little later on the show, we'll just look at some of those. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so tweet. You don't have to tweet at Leo Laporte or anything like that. Just use the hashtag Twit Squarespace, and I'll do a search. Do you talk about the integrations that they have? Like, like if, what? It, like if you're if you're a developer and you for Twitter or yeah uh, for Twitter, yeah. but they've got the big ones for all the social networks. But if you're a developer and you have like uh, you have a GitHub account, you can integrate that. If you're you a Do Dropbox you user, GitHub? yeah. Wow. And if you're a Dropbox user and you have like galleries set up when you upload an image to to a Dropbox image gallery, it can mm -hmm. show up as a draw as a an image gallery on Squarespace, all that stuff. It's good it's good stuff. Twit Squarespace. Hashtag mm -hmm. Twit Squarespace. And the tweets just pour in. Uh moving on. You can't watch porn in Britain soon. <laughs> just a, a heads up. <laughs> no, well you can't it's it'll be blocked by default. That is so weird. So you can opt in, and my joke is that opting in immediately emails your wife and let you let's, yeah. let's, let's her know that. You uh, excuse in. me, Mr. Prime Minister, I would like to watch porn. Could you just uh, flip that switch for me, Mr. Prime, Mr. Cameron, sir? What do you have to? Where do you? Do you have to go walk in the town square and say I am a porn watcher to get the porn turned on? Just unbelievable. People just uh, how do they block it for the whole country all at one time? Uh, well, they're going through the ISPs. So the way it works, and by the way, one of the ISPs <laughs> uses uh, a, a filter system made by Huawei, uh -huh. which is owned by the Chinese military. So I think that's a nice nexus. Yeah. They go together. Yeah. The Chinese military is determining what's porn in the UK. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, the ISPs are not thrilled about this, of course, the British ISPs, but they're They've always had this. Apparently, this has always been the case that there is a, a, a switch. You could turn on that. That this is by law, or at least by agreement with the ISPs. There is a filter, and people could turn it on. What's changing is it's going to be on by default now. So you have to explicitly say no, no, no porn. We're British, or something like that. Um, and of course, it's going to block stuff that is not porn. Furthermore, uh, David Cameron, the Prime Minister himself, said. Oh, but that doesn't include page three, the topless girls the newspaper in, thing. in the newspaper. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we're not going to block that. So I don't know. This is the problem. It's a slippery slope. What is porn? I don't know. Leo's porn. Okay, block him. 
He's advocating porn, which I am because it's a fun thing to watch. Uh, no, I'm not. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going down the rabbit hole, and I can't stop myself from falling. Uh, we're number nine. The U.S. is now, ladies and gentlemen, something to be proud of, number nine uh, in uh, Internet Connection mm -hmm. rankings. Mm -hmm. So maybe if you're curious, is there, would you like to move to a country with a better ranking than the Internet? As soon as this site comes up, I'll give you the list. There it is. <laughs> Mine is just, I, apparently my internet is down. They blocked it. Why? Yours came right up. I'm on the production Wi-Fi now. Me too. You know what? This is the new MacBook Air. I think I'm still having the Wi-Fi problems. This one is new too, and it's... Um, oh, that's the 2013? Yeah, this is the brand new 11-inch 11, 11 11 inch one, yeah. And you have it, did you have any Wi-Fi problems with that? Yeah, and then it went away the other day. When they updated it? Yeah. Mm. Okay, here it is, finally. This is from Akamai, which probably, you know, this they is probably know. fairly reasonable. They, they, they do, uh, they're the biggest CDN in the world, and they serve a lot of content. They, they do a state-of-the-internet report. They handle about a third of the global web traffic. This is for the first quarter, Q1, 2013. We dropped from our previous uh, place, I guess we were eighth, at 8.6 megabits per second. Sweden now is beating us. I think we need to work on this. 8.9 megabits. Latvia. I have some inside info here on why we're going to be going up soon. We are Okay, let me give you the list. Places that have better internet than we do. South Korea, Japan, Hong Kong, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Latvia, the Czech Republic, <laughs> and Sweden. Mm -hmm. Thank God At those damn Danish are slower than us. Yeah, seriously. I am I think we'll be faster soon because I just finally got cable after living in this house for a year. I'm no longer on a wireless connection. I now have 50 megabits. I know. So you're so I'm much better. Be pushing our pushing our average up, I think. And you're all welcome. Man. Next, <laughs> now that you're not working for Engadget, your phone never drops off. This is true. Yes. Yes. Nice. I actually have, uh, I have uh, fiber to my home now, thankfully. So it's quite a big step up. Good. Actually, uh, Verizon is now offering half a gigabit uh, Fios. Mm -hmm. but it's like 300 bucks a month. It's kind of expensive. I see. I would have to get that. We've got Google Fiber coming to Austin. <laughs> and I'm excited. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about that. For me, that. too. Please, would you It's leave. good stuff. So I saw that and I actually contemplated a move to uh, your house. Come on out. Um, Got, them, Austin, got a room in the Austin back. will be the third uh, city right after uh, Kansas City was the first. Kansas City was the first. Salt Lake City getting it somewhere in Utah. Provo. I thought we were the second. Are you? Oh, Austin then Provo. <laughs> She's good. I like it. Yeah, She's see, like jumped right on her right iPhone. On I'll, let me look that up for you, sir. Yeah. Um, That's just an excuse to be on her phone. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually tweeting. <laughs> um, I. Why is it that we are? Is it because we are the original internet country, and so? This happened with cell phones, right? Yeah. We were at a disadvantage because cell phone service started here, and so we had older networks, and co countries like South Korea let, let leapfrogged over us just by saying, well, no, we're going to put in the new new stuff, the faster Yeah, now we've got regulation slowing things down. I was in Romania last year, and they were just building out their cell phone networks. So they had really fast HSPA and really fast connectivity pretty much throughout the entire country, <sighs> which is amazing, much faster than we have through much of our, uh, you know, through much of the middle states anyway. So that was a little bit disappointing to see, honestly, and I think that's exactly what's going on here too. Newer networks are faster than right. uh, our aging ones. Number one state for uh, average internet speed in the country, what would you guess? The biggest, the best, the fastest state, Texas, perhaps? I California, would think Texas, yeah. Maybe New York? No, Vermont. <laughs> yes, I'm a Vermonter, so I'm very proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> Vermont to be proud of. didn't have AT&T until last year. Really? But you've got the fastest internet. I don't understand it. Then New Hampshire. Then uh, Delaware. It's all East Coast. District yeah. of Columbia. Where are you from, ma'am? East Coast. Michigan. Not on the list. Utah, Massachusetts, Virginia, Maryland, New Jersey, and Connecticut to round out the top ten. All Vermont of them. also has the best maple syrup in the country, it, too. It, uh, so no. Uh, to do mm, uh, mm. Well, in the country, okay. It's, it's a, the sweetest. It's the sweetest. Vermont? Yeah, there's yeah. actually a, a law stating the minimum sugar content in Vermont is actually higher than than that from Quebec and from elsewhere. Oh, okay. Too. I'm going to so stop go. buying that damn Canadian stuff and <laughs> start, start, start buying Vermont maple syrup. I always did get Vermont maple syrup actually because we live in the Rhode thing Island. You learned today, by the yeah. way. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We had a maple tree out front. We tapped it once. Didn't make good maple syrup though. There's, I guess, there's a it's a sugar maple. It's a particular kind of maple. 
Yeah, do you know you about this, Tim? Or am I just looking at you for no I do. reason? I know. I know all about it. You can get you can get syrup from all sorts of maples, and even you can make it from pine trees too. But uh, but maples have the highest sugar content within their sap, so you need the the less or the least sap to actually do it. I think it's thirty gallons, and from a sugar maple, and from other maples, it's closer to. 50 or 60 gallons per gallon of Jeez. maple syrup that you actually get out. So you have to, it's like a 30 to 1 ratio. You boil it down. You boil it? Is that what you do? You boil it down? Yeah, you boil it for days and days and days and days and days. And Have you uh, done steam this? Rising. Uh, I have done this, yes. I, I'm a Vermonter. Everyone's done this. It's pretty much part so of your education. Do you like go out in the backyard and go, I'd tap that tree? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Again. You, you, you got to look for the red, the, like the red leaves. In, in the yeah, I like this. This is good. This this conversation is going all sorts of. How many ways. gallons do you get out of a tree? <laughs> I obviously it depends on the size of the tree. Um, it, not a whole lot, honestly. I mean, these these, these big 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 farms that make a lot of syrup have hundreds and hundreds sure. of acres of trees. So, you know, one tree you can maybe Takes. get a couple of gallons of maple syrup out of at the end of the season if you if you're constantly you tapping serious? it and clearing those buckets. And it's a lot of work. It's a lot. Of, I haven't done it since I was a kid, just because it's it takes a lot of work. Takes a mighty big tree to make gallons of maple syrup. That it does. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Google serves 25, as long as we're talking numbers, Google mm. serves 25% of North American internet traffic. When you combine that to what, the 30% of uh, Netflix, mm -hmm. between Google and Netflix, it's like half of the internet yeah. in the U.S. is Google or Netflix. Yeah, that's that's crazy numbers. and it's, That must be YouTube when they say Google, right? I think that, uh, well, I think that includes, yeah, that would include YouTube and all of their properties. But the, it, what they're saying here in this great article is that it explains why Google can, is building so many data centers right. and why you keep seeing these things going up. Right. Three years ago, it says they were 6% of the internet traffic. And that's insane how, yeah. what? In three years. They've quadrupled in three Isn't years? That crazy? That, I'm, I'm saying it must be YouTube because YouTube has seen that kind of growth, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think search engine traffic is a huge... Maybe it is. I don't know. Google's been building uh, data centers on four continents. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, pretty soon every town will have a Google data center. Yeah, that's exactly what they want. Actually, Google has more data centers than the NSA, really. If you yeah. think about it. As long it. as each, each data center comes with a fiber connection to my house, yeah. I'm okay yeah. with that. Wow. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think you're right about the YouTube, but I think they also do, you know, when, when you think about their web apps, when you think about Gmail and things like that, and people who are, I wonder if they count that, like if you're a Gmail user, if they're including that. Right. Mm. Because if they are, you think about that, you think about all the email, all the attachments, that's, those are big numbers too. And there's Google Drive that's too. That's a good which, point, actually. You know, yeah. It's Google small Drive, at this point, yeah. but it's only going to get bigger. Right. Right. Do you, I don't Google doesn't for some reason it doesn't scare me but maybe you guys have smart are smarter does Google does that worry you the size that Google is becoming people often used to say oh it's Skynet right it's getting close when they start building uh, robots and they you know, are especially those with laser eyes and and guns <laughs> and that can fly and step on skulls and things then I'll get a little bit worried uh, but but no I mean ultimately you know somebody's gonna have all your information whether it's I, I'm almost happier that it's with one person rather than scattershot across a right. zillion different startups uh, with varying levels of security. Uh, I tend to trust Google more than, you know, startup X. Uh, and so if Google continues to innovate and do interesting things, I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable having them have my data. It, it is a little bit worrying that they can connect a lot more dots than anybody else on the internet at this point. Uh, but as long as they stay secure and so far, you know, knock on, knock on wood here, uh, so far, so far, so far, so good on that point. I still think that Google's goal is just to get as much information about us as possible and that then what? that's i don't know that's the that's the big question is then what but i feel like all of the things that google is doing right now is to get information and i i'm not i'm not in the conspiracy theory group saying google's trying to build uh you know a like a personality record on every single person as much as they're trying to understand what people do in general not so much what did leo look at today but what do people like Leo or what do people in general want to do? What but are why, they all that wouldn't to scare do? you, would it? It doesn't, it doesn't scare this me. It's general. It's not, I mean, it's not. Well, that, that's if we, if we go the route of saying Google is not necessarily evil and that they're just one, because if they understand these kinds of trends, it's like the, the, the Twitter thing where they can show you uh, Twitter advertisements now, or will be showing you Twitter advertisements based on the ad that you just saw on TV, where it's that kind of connected yeah. thing. Google wants to see these trends. They want to see 
what people are doing and what consumers are buying. And I think there's individual targeting for sure in there, but I think the, the real value for Google is to just understand us as a people and what we're doing and where we're going and what we want to focus on. And if they can understand that, then they can get ahead of it. And then what are they going to do? I don't know. But I, I, everything that they do is to learn our habits and to mine that, that data. That's what I think. So why well, I don't necessarily think they're doing it for evil. So. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I don't know why, but it doesn't bother me. It's, um, But then I start saying, oh, but look, now I have the Google phone and mm -hmm. I have the Google tablet and I have the Google on my TV mm -hmm. and I like it. <laughs> and now I'm wondering if I've been co-opted, you know? Well, I love Google now. It doesn't scare me. It's great. I get to the airport. It shows me my ticket. Yeah, but I think, I think there's a whole... Uh, group of people and maybe I understand. this group is kind of large who are they're very worried about so they shouldn't use google they should let me use google and not yeah. use it themselves they have that choice for the most right. part but i think they're trying to stop me from using google they're like saying mm. oh google shouldn't exist no if you don't want to use it go home don't go outside because there's satellites be private. Right, but see, this is what people are afraid of is that, is that the that everything eventually is going to go through google google fiber comes to austin right and now I get Google Fiber. Now they now they've got everything. That's why they're doing it. This is what the people say. I'm not the people. This is not. I'm not saying this. No, no. And this that, is no, what, I understand. So now thank they've you got for, my thank you for channeling and, the people. And I do that. You're a man of the a people. man of the people. They the upstream and downstream now. Everything that I do is going through Google, right? And I'm using Gmail and I'm using Google Apps for work, right? And I have the Google Play on the Android, and you know, and I'm renting movies from, and even the stuff that I'm doing that falls outside of Google, like Amazon or Netflix or Apple. Now they see what I'm doing there too. That makes people nervous. I don't want to go all gawker on you, but uh, there have <laughs> been a number of articles <laughs> uh, about Eric Schmidt yeah. building a condo in New York City that is heavily soundproofed, and he won't have a doorman. Mm -hmm. He can pay for privacy; he's worth eight billion dollars. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny that the guy who says, "Hey, don't worry." Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let us spy on you. Right. If you haven't done anything wrong, you're not got nothing to fear. He literally said that, which I'm sure he wishes he hadn't. Is so concerned about his own privacy, he's soundproofing his apartment. Maybe it's his neighbors. I think there's one guy who has like the big base. Oh yeah, you don't want that. Goes two a.m. Goes That's the worst. The mm -hmm. But no, no doorman. And of course, the gawker part of this is so he can sneak girlfriends in or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't. Regardless of that, he wants privacy, mm -hmm. and he can afford privacy. He doesn't fly the commercial. No. He doesn't have to worry about everything this. we do is tracked anyway. Like there right. isn't anything that you can do today that that isn't a record in a database. Your ISP knows more shared. about you than anybody, right? No, I mean, yeah. yeah. And I don't trust my ISP. No my way. ISP is Comcast. Never. Never. Who's your ISP? Uh, Time Warner Cable. Yeah. The you worst. don't trust cable guys. No. That's the last person. And you're you Verizon. Uh, I'm now on Time Warner. Now that I switched over. Yeah, I mean, it's not seriously, and you're if people are worried about Google. I'd worry about Comcast and Time Warner. Who is that? Who's that? <laughs> Sumner Redstone and some. You know, he does. The guy, they don't have any morals. They don't have scruples. Amazon. Oh, they'll turn you right over to the feds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, Homer's got something to say. I got to turn him down. <laughs> he said, "Better them than me." He is so apropos. Yeah. Um, Amazon hits 97,000 employees, has tripled in size in three years. If you look at the graph, Microsoft flat at 100,000. Google uh, growing, but not much to 40,000. That orange line looks like somebody drew this in crayon. <laughs> it does. What, the I geek wire. Paint, actually. <laughs> I think it is crayon. It's Microsoft Paint. <laughs> This is the stupidest graph. Why am I showing this graph? <laughs> Geekwire.com. You need to get, like, Excel. Uh, but, <laughs> but I presume the numbers are accurate, and that's big growth uh, for Amazon. Mm -hmm. Now, probably um, those 100,000 employees, 97,000 employees are, uh, a lot of them are warehouse people, right? I would think most of them are probably warehouse people. Uh, you know, you have to think also about what it takes to be able to go online right now, like you did with your uh, your Chromecast thing. Right. Order that and have it to your house the next day. Forget what has to happen out after it leaves Amazon's facility, but all of the, and you, you probably remember those videos. It's kind of saw, amazing, how really. How it's all organized. It's yeah. Staffing those and having, the, it, those are 24-hour a day, seven-day-a-week operations that are just... It's just crazy how they do that. And I, so I think a lot of it is 
uh, is the physical people in the in the warehouses because they're not they're not building that much new software. You know, they have their divisions to do the Kindle and they have the software there and 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 streaming and things. I'm sure that's quite a few people, but I don't think this kind of growth is. Uh, but you know they they are they are poised to surpass Microsoft now in direct employment. They will be bigger than Microsoft in the, within amazing. another quarter. Kind Which of is amazing. Crazy. How, how uh, the actual spend on payroll compares? Because I think that'd be a bit a better indicator of you know skilled employees versus kind of uh, ah. manual labor. But, but ultimately, you know, I mean, factory workers and that kind of thing. Look at the balance. I think that would be a better mm -hmm. way to uh, to compare. But uh, that that number may be a little bit harder to get. They lost, uh, what, $7 million this quarter? Yeah, and they're going to lose more next quarter, they said. Here's a picture yeah. of uh, the FedEx uh, <laughs> employees. <laughs> i got to skip ahead to this. <laughs> Did you see this viral video? I haven't seen this. <laughs> this is from Yahoo News, although I think they're stealing it from uh, somebody else. So, Chad, can you find the original um, video of the FedEx worker? It's actually, uh, here it is. Is this it? No, that's the one of the guy throwing it over the fence. This is... Uh, which is also great. Which is also great. The guy had a, a security camera, and it was a monitor. And the, and the FedEx guy couldn't get in, so he just threw it away. Oh, my God. <laughs> he hurled it over the fence. Which makes me want to get a camera on my front door so I can see all the antics that uh, all the UPS and FedEx guys are doing. I've seen videos of the UPS guys stealing FedEx packages and videos of FedEx guys stealing UPS packages. Um, it'd be fun to record my own. I thought uh, this was a... Um, a fake video when I first saw it. Uh, but in fact, FedEx has responded and said that the employee has been fired. Well, and that's only because they saw him. <laughs> they caught her. Right. Um, so, God, every one of these has ads galore on the front of it. I knew somebody that worked at a shipping company, let's say that, and they said, no, we're not at all careful with your boxes. <laughs> uh, give me a link, chat room. When, when, one that doesn't have... Uh, you got it? Yeah, see, they all have, like, there we go. There it is. This is a... Yeah. <laughs> oh! How do you like that? Throw it in the back there. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know we're in a hurry. we got to get... That's we gotta exactly move what you these think they're doing. They, they are doing what you think they're doing. I don't know what... what oh, this is a scene like from uh, Ace Ventura. Yeah, where see, that's the problem is we get this crap on top of it. <laughs> ah, wait a minute. Let me see if I can find it. Here is... Uh, so this was apparently a guy um, who had a camera in the car behind the truck was watching this and said i gotta i gotta videotape this but it looks like a joke here it is so this is the actual can you get my uh, yeah this is the actual videos <laughs> the and, part and, of it that surprises me is how do they even like sort this like when they're when they're doing the deliveries there's something i thought this was fake because <laughs> she's smiling seem... she's laughing um, he got the truck number intentionally so that he could see this. But look at, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> they're kind of light boxes. Maybe they're. It must have been the end of the day. And she was just ready yeah, to go home. She's but this enough. is what you think they're doing with your stuff. By the way, yes, this is surveillance video from the NSA. I just want you to know. <laughs> this is why you can't get away with anything anymore. Yeah. She's it. probably pissed. My, vi my private, keep showing it because she keeps doing it. He does too. It's almost like there's a game. Like who could look at? They're laughing. Who could throw it farther? Watch, watch this, watch this. I'm gonna frisbee it. This one. Uh, let's. Uh, this is uh, in here. This is a uh, laptop. Let's just see how far I can throw that. Uh, maybe she stopped. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's a pickup. Oh, that's why they don't care about how it's sorted because mm, they're picking. They're picking stuff it up, up to take it. Okay. Right. That's so when the damage they'll, occurs. They'll just throw it in the uh, bin and somebody else will sort it. Hey, we've got a couple of uh, Squarespace sites. Let me just show these real quick and then we'll get to uh, Tom Merritt, what's ahead in the week ahead. This is from JC Photos. We asked people to tweet out uh, their Squarespace site mm -hmm. um, based in North England. Here's Whale Watch House. Oh, a vacation rental in Mendocino. Ooh, I want to go there. Ooh, I'll be calling you. Alex McCoy. He is a music education and trombone performance major at University of Cincinnati College. Love that. Tie-dye shirt and everything. Tie-dye shirt, ready tech to go. bites, mobile industry trends. Or is that, uh, yeah, it's another squares. So thank you, everybody. And I got quite a few more. We got like several hundred Squarespace sites. Thank you all for tweeting those out. We'll get some more of those in just a little bit. Uh, hashtag twit Squarespace.
Tom Merritt is uh, here. Actually, he was here. It was nice to have him up in studio. Really, I missed him. That. You know Tom? Yeah, I, I've only met him in person once, but Thank he's God. had me on uh, the other show on, yeah, on a few show, times. Yeah. I love that show. Yeah. What is that called? Uh, Tech News Today. Tech News Today. That's I've it. I've heard of that. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. They'll be covering the week ahead. Tom, what's ahead? Hey, thanks. Here's a look at uh, some of the things we'll be keeping an eye on in the week ahead, Leo, for Tech News Today and other shows. On Tuesday, July 30th, Xiaomi, they're sort of the apple of China, are holding a press conference to announce a product-related partnership with Tencent's messaging service QQ. Wednesday, July 31st, Yelp has their earnings, and supposedly the NVIDIA Shield is going to ship. Thursday, August 1st, Google's going to upgrade its SSL certificates to 2048-bit keys. At least they'll start the process of doing that. Also on the August 1st, LinkedIn has their earnings. DEF CON kicks off and Black Hat wraps up. And Motorola has their Moto X press event. Friday, August 2nd, Dell makes their third attempt at a sharehold meeting to uh, approve the buyback of Dell to take it private. We'll see if that stays on schedule. That's a look at the week ahead. Back to you, Leo. Previously on Twit, before you buy. You just twist the throttle and you take off and it goes quick. Like, I would say up to like 50 miles per hour, zero to 50 is faster than my street bike that yeah, I have, my 600cc. It's faster than mine as well. Twit Live Specials. Chromecast, the easiest way to bring your favorite online entertainment to your TV. Oh, it's a thumb drive. Security Now. Never let a serious crisis go to waste. The point is you can use fear People, forces, can use fear to to achieve. Triangulation. Uh, I was working in the dining hall serving uh, food. But I would always say, hey, here's some fine mashed potatoes for you. Would you like a pat of butter? But I realized in hindsight they didn't like it because what they would say is, <laughs> oh, that's great. You ought to be in radio. And I always heard it, hey, that's great. You ought to be in radio. And what they were saying is, oh, that's great. You ought to be in radio. Like, not, get out of here and do it on somewhere else because this now is you've no, got a face. For, we want to was... eat. Twit. Now in color. Live in color. Well, maybe we don't like it. So uh, the big uh, Motorola X, Moto X reveal, and we will be covering that live. Do we know what time that's going to be, Chad? It's in uh, New York City, so it's probably know. early. Yeah, let's Like way find too out. early for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be 3 a.m. our time. Boom. Boom. Drive, drive time in New York. So uh, that's coming up Thursday, uh, the Moto X. And... Um, this is good. this is going to be a hot fall season because we've got an iPhone five. We've got the uh, neck, the Note three is coming mm -hmm. out in September. Mm -hmm. Will be announced in September. Um, I don't know if there could be a live stream of the Moto X. We haven't found that out yet, but we will we will talk about that. Lots of rumors. I can't talk about it because I've seen it, played with it, and uh, uh, was nd eight. I hate it, but um, I will be able to talk August first. Um, so you guys just have a conversation amongst <laughs> yourselves. I'm very I think excited. It was grand. I, I think it's going to be grand. It looked good in, in Eric Schmidt's hand. Um, this is the first phone from Motorola that Google did not that since Google bought them. They released last week new droids, mm -hmm. but that was in the pipe. That was in the pipeline. Okay. Um, no Google influence on those. This is all Google. This new one is, right? This is, yeah, those they didn't have anything to do with. In fact, remember the, it was the CFO, I think, of, of Google who said, we're not real thrilled with <laughs> the others. they got nothing to be excited about. <laughs> um, but I think they are, in fact, fairly excited about um, this Moto X. I'm just, I want you guys to repeat rumors. And I will, um, I'll pull my ear if... <laughs> Let's see. What can you say? 3D I screen? Can, I can tell, no. Oh, okay. I can tell you one thing. I can tell you one thing. Not everything that is interesting about this phone is leaked out yet. Really? Yeah. Hardware-wise, you mean? Yeah. There's some... Well, I think it's I think it's going to be very interesting, and I, I have a feeling it's going to be fairly competitive. There are... There's good and bad, but I think it's going to be fairly competitive, and I think it's... What I was telling people on the radio show, and I don't think this is a violation of my... Uh, moral obligation not to say anything is I would wait before you buy a phone till you hear what this that is. That good? I didn't say that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just would be prudent. It'd be prudent to wait. Well, we'll cover it one way or the other. We'll cover it live, and I just it may just be me finally finally exploding because I can finally tell you something. Mm -hmm. um, it will be a phone. This much we know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And apparently, somebody's saying it's got magic glass. So that's magic good. glass. You can't go wrong with magic glass.
Hey, here's some very, very good news. Actually, I'll save this for uh, after the commercial, but some very, very good news. The longest-running patent troll case oh, yeah. of all time is finally dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead, and we'll talk about it. Uh, and you, you and I should talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should. But uh, I know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking I about? Know exactly. We what should you're talk. Talking about. We should talk. We should talk. We but should. our lawyers have informed us that until the divorce is final. <laughs> <laughs> Our show today brought to you by, by our friends at Citrix. I mentioned earlier uh, their fabulous go-to-meeting program. Here's another one that really does change the way you do business. I use this uh, every week to send audio to the radio stations. I used to use one of those commercial, you know, co you know consumer-grade file-sharing things. I used to send email attachments. Neither were good solutions. They, they broke all the time. There were all sorts of issues. I can get files now uh, out to people in my business. Uh, I know they got it. I know uh, I have absolute control. I can password protect it. I can say how long they can download it for, a day, a week, a month, a year, forever. I can say how many copies they can download. Uh, it couldn't be easier with sharefile.com. It is built for business. Do not send secure, you know, patient records through email. That's illegal. If you're a medical professional, this is HIPAA compliant. It's compliant with regulations in a great number of industries. That's one of the reasons that when uh, when you sign up, we ask you, and by the way, to do that, click that link at the top that says radio listeners. Click here. Uh, use our offer code TWIT. When you sign up, they're going to ask you what industry you're in, and that's because it can be customized for a variety of industries, from accounting to legal. <laughs> it always cracks me up. When you see uh, when an attorney, uh, you get email from an attorney, and it says, if you're not the intended recipient, destroy this destroy email immediately. Email. Yeah, it w <laughs> that doesn't work. That makes me want to read, read it <laughs> mm -hmm. and print it. <laughs> so, come on. Uh, even even a lawyer. This is so easy. Even a lawyer could use this. Sharefile.com. Send files quickly and securely. You could try it free for 30 days when you visit uh, Sharefile. Click that radio link at the top of the page. I know it's not a radio show, but that's what we got. And uh, use the offer code TWIT. Your entire company can send large files, big files too, four gigabytes, as much as four gigabytes, which you cannot send via email. I got a bounce back the other day for 10 megabytes. I was just trying to send one picture, but now that's why I always use ShareFile. Even like I met somebody at a restaurant, cute kid took pictures of the kid. I said, I'll send you the pictures and ShareFile made it so easy. It's a, it's a branded site. They don't have to create an account or log in or anything. They can just download the stuff. Easy for everybody involved. Try it free. Sharefile.com. Use our offer code TWIT if you would. Uh, Eolas is a name that will live in infamy. Although when I read the story, I kind of felt like maybe they weren't really patent trolls. Mm. Well, these guys are the ones who, of course, all this is in Texas. Tyler, Texas. Tyler, Texas. Is that near Austin? No, it's what it's East Texas, right? Uh yeah, it's East Texas. Yeah. And uh for whatever reason, the the judges in this part of East Texas are in, enjoy this kind of thing. No, no, no. In or, fact, the the okay, so the lawsuit that you and I Yeah. Um which we don't want to go into detail because no. our lawyers have told us not to talk about anything. Right. Um but it would be in Marshall, Texas. Oh, right. That's and the one. The the judge in Marshall thinks he's doing God's work. And this is why it's mm -hmm. hard. Because, well, in this case, this patent was fought, was created by a guy named Michael Doyle, the Eolus patent. He was working uh, at the University of California, so they have part of this patent. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says that he was the first, pre-Tim Berners-Lee or the World Wide Web, to include music clips, search features, maps, and embedded applications on a web page. Right. He took the web, he says, from a primitive and static world to today's seamlessly yeah, interactive environment. He did it. He did that. And he sued everybody. Adobe, Apple, Amazon, Frito-Lay, GoDaddy, Google, JCPenney, JP Morgan, Playboy, Office Depot, everybody, Oracle, Texas Instruments, everybody. Um, almost everybody caved and paid him. The patent he was granted was in 1994. You know, Tim Berners-Lee invented the web in 1989. Mm -hmm. So it's five years later. What happens is these patents are written very broadly. Uh, and so he sued Microsoft. They gave him $100 million. Go away. Uh, he, he sued JCPenney. 
Amazon and Google, and that was his mistake because they didn't give in. They went to court. The judge in Tyler, Texas, uh, I think the judge threw it out. Eolas paid. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Eolas appealed. Mm -hmm. They were ordered to pay their costs. They appealed. The appeal court has now thrown this uh, out. But the reason it's tough is because, you know, this guy can make the claim, well, I did invent this, and, mm -hmm. I, and I deserve to be compensated for this. And so it's very difficult. It's tough to prove it, uh, I guess. It's tough to prove that he did or that he didn't. And so many of the things that he's claiming that he created or that he invented are things that we just take for granted as... It's the web. The way the web works, yeah. The jury, by the way, is a jury trial, as it often is. Mm -hmm. um, the jury tri The jury was apparently swayed by the fact that Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who invented the web, testified. He went to Tyler, Texas mm -hmm. and testified. And I mean, I Even I haven't been to Tyler, Texas. Yeah. Tyler's, <laughs> I think I've been there. I hope I don't ever have to go to Marshall, Texas. Yeah. But apparently the judge there, and there's one judge, and this is what happens, uh, is very pro-plaintiff. He... Mm -hmm really believes that these guys uh, are the little guy trying to protect their rights against big corporations mm -hmm. like Oracle and Google who are just, you know, robbing them. Yeah. And, of course, he probably saw the movie about the windshield wiper guy, right? Right. And that's a true story. The guy invented intermittent windshield wipers. Ford or whatever used them, GM, I can't remember who, without licensing them. He, he, he practically killed the guy. I mean, yeah. he, uh, getting his money out of them. Is it Jeff Bridges? He invented them? Anyway. Uh, <laughs> For his Tucker car. The Tucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <laughs> that, that's a case where the little guy was ripped off. Right. And that's what, that's what the patents are, I think, hope, you know, what people hope they will be used for, is that if somebody comes up with an idea and does something, uh, you know, does something important, that they will be protected. But I don't know. But they threw this out. They said, no, the guy is not, not right. So that's gone. And it was really a holdup against a lot of companies. Now, I don't know if, I don't think Microsoft gets its $100 million back. No, I don't. I, anybody, I, as far as I know, and if you from paid. what I've read, if you paid already, then that's fine. But it was only if you held out and didn't. And it was just Google, Microsoft, Google, J.C. Penny. No, Microsoft paid, right? Yeah. yeah. Google, Amazon, and J.C. Penny were the three that finally they said, no, yeah. we're taking this to trial. And that's that's how these guys work, because what they try to do is make the amount of money they're asking low enough that it's cheaper to just give them the money than mm -hmm. it is to fight it, even though you know they're in the wrong. Mm -hmm. And so for Microsoft, what's $100 million to Microsoft, right? Lunch money. Lunch money. And Microsoft did fight him for a while. Um, Jeff Bridges did not patent bridge mix. That was his mistake. That was not his thing. Not his thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, we actually have we've run out of stories I have fewer stories than I have commercials this has never happened before on Twit got the Apple stuff oh what's the Apple stuff thank you Dan Benjamin God bless you one billion podcasts are you happy yes I think this is excellent half of them are yours dude did you get on that list of uh I'm not in the list. I don't, oh, I don't man, know if I'm you were list. robbed. Maybe I'm in the list. Let's go. Twit was in the list. So uh, Apple uh, celebrating the billionth podcast subscription. Not the billionth podcast, but the billionth podcast subscription. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, Apple always kind of had a um, love-hate relationship with podcasts. Remember mm -hmm. Steve Jobs said, uh, it's just guys in their basement blogging. Uh, well, that's something. what it was way kind back. Do you remember when they added it to... <laughs> you remember when they added podcasts to iTunes, right? right? And what a difference that made. It was huge. So they uh, celebrated by... Where's the list you're talking and about? Maybe it's gone now. Okay. Let me look. It's on the iTunes store. It, it may be over because this is this happened last week. Okay. Uh, but they had a big thing. They said a billion subscriptions. And uh, they listed some of the... Uh, we were... Twit was one of the classic podcasts. This means I'm old. Originals. Classic. The originals. Yeah. Original podcast. Well, again, my internet. But you know, if you if you look at when podcasting first started out in in iTunes and in the iTunes Store, 
there were not that many, and you had to go through that. What was at the time a very long submission process to get your That's right. your show in there. You remember that? Were you? When did you? When was your first? Two thousand eight. Two. I think the first. It was pretty mature by then, wasn't it? Two thousand six is when I oh, did yeah, that's the, the little Hive Logic podcast yeah. thing where I would interview there you go. people, and we had eight nine people listening. You still do Hive Logic? Uh, I don't update it much anymore. Oh, okay, but uh, you know that that time period, and if you remember, um, Odeo was right. shut down that day, you know, because such a iTunes came yeah. out with it. And, yeah, that and was Ev Williams' company that eventually they pivoted and right. invented Twitter. They invented Twitter. Turned out pretty well for them. Yeah, not a bad day, no. actually, if, in retrospect. As, it, as but, it turns out. But, you know, I remember that, and that, that opened everything up for people who wanted to say, how do I get the show that I'm recording, which used to be just linked to on my website, which if it wasn't that popular, how would anyone ever find it, which right. is my problem, to getting it out there and making it something that was more accessible to people and that they could download. And... Now, you know, and I don't, I don't think there is a bigger place, a bigger marketplace, if I can use that word for podcasts than, than iTunes. No, right no, now. it's still 90% it's still, of our downloads. Yeah. I wish it weren't, uh, because I hate to be dependent on Apple in that way, but it's just, it is. And it so, is. And yeah. it's all, it's really the, one of the best ways for people to find shows too, you right. know, and, and I agree with you. I wish there were better ways or other ways right. that had the same kind of footprint. That's why that we iTunes do live has. and you do live too. Yeah. I don't know if live for you means what it means to us. I mean, for us, I want people to just tune in like it's on TV, like twenty four seven. Right. You have a scheduled time when you when you turn on the mic. Yeah, like if listen. if you if we're not doing a live show at that moment, then you'll hear the the reruns, which right. is kind of where you guys were, you know, three. We or four still years do that. Ago. I mean, if you tune in at midnight, there'll be reruns. Yeah. But it's all video all the time, and the reason is I am I thinking of late mm -hmm. is that. Um, it's kind of like physical media. The downloading and storing a bunch of shows is okay for certain, you know, like you're going to get on a plane, okay. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, that's too much trouble. And if you could just go to a place, go to twit.tv on the web, and there's like people sitting around talking about stuff you're interested in, mm -hmm. that's probably better. Yeah. It's like the Today Show is always on. But there's a huge segment of my listeners I know because we... Well, you we, have smarter listeners. You're more... Okay. Uh, it's a more intellectual show. Well, th thanks. Thanks. Um, but I think that we, the kind of listeners that we have, I think they're, when we, whenever we ask some questions, I just pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's left your chat room. Um, that's what we call them jackals. But, but, but if, 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 I mean, your shows are more cerebral perhaps. Well, than ours. The, the thing about that is, and what we find whenever we, whenever we interview, whenever we interview the audience by doing listeners, uh, you know, listener polls and things is that they're not, I wish they were more, we had more live listeners. I really wish Me we, too. we do. I think that's the future. But so many of them are listening, you know, on, as, a podcast when they are at the gym or when they're driving in their commute or, you know, and the show that they want to hear uh, is recorded at a time that they can't listen, but they don't want to miss it. So they come back to it. So that's the, that's the, I think really the largest aspect of, of our audience. I've so. started trying to, you have so many live listeners. It's thousands tune into every show, which is yeah, crazy. There's probably how many bear, how many people are listening right now? Do you know? Bear. Anyway, he's not, I think he's asleep. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, you know, five to 10,000. And then when there's a live event, like last week's Google event, it's yeah. in the hundreds of thousands. That's crazy. Um, but we can't monetize it because it's hard to demonstrate that number. Where you can, a download, you can say, hey, this is how many were downloaded. You right. can show the server log. Um, but, um, I mean, the goal. But I feel like live is, is to make what live. you want. Yeah, yeah. It you is for you that. too. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I mean, I would love nothing more than to know that that we had shows going on, even if it's eight hours a day. You know, that people could tune right. into and they no, could that's listen about what we do. Eight or nine hours. A I day. mean, that'd be great. And, so, and and then, what then I then say it, is, the download is the on demand. If you missed it, it's on demand, or it's more convenient for you to listen to it another right. time. Right. Because we have global listeners. If it's the middle of the middle of the night mm -hmm. somewhere, then obviously, a download would be better for you. Eventually, I'd love to be twenty four seven, live twenty four seven. You're getting close. Tim, do you do, do you, are you still doing any, any, uh, audio or video on the internet? You did no, stuff with Engadget, uh, I, I know. 
Yeah, I was on the Engadget podcast and the Engadget show, of course, back then. Uh, and certainly our numbers kind of match yours in terms of uh, percentages. You know, a, a huge percentage came from iTunes or from other yeah. RSS subscriptions versus live. Uh, you, you know, live podcasts, we'd have maybe a couple hundred people, but downloads would be, you know, tens of thousands. So it was a huge difference. But uh, but no, right now, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, this is it for the moment, actually. <laughs> Good. He's, well, he's, he's, got an, he's got his blog. Anytime you want. Yeah. Do have a he's, blog. he's a blogger now. He's a blogger. Anytime you want to come on. We should have Tim on all the time now. Because he's got some free Thank time you. when he's not racing. I would love to. Yeah. Well, we love having you on. So, uh, iTunes. Now, this is interesting because Apple's always said iTunes is not a profit center. Or for right. a long time, they said we break even. We do mm -hmm. it because we sell computers. Uh, yeah, I don't think you can say that anymore. iTunes brought in three point nine billion dollars in the quarter. Am I crazy? That's a lot of money. Now that's revenue. Did they say what the profit is? They'll, they, they'll never say that. They they don't break it they down. They they'll never down. say that. That's certainly not a number that even Apple can ignore at this point. And I've made that case before, too, that ultimately, you know, a Apple can get closer to the point where they can start making less margins on their devices because they've got all this profit coming in. And it just keeps it just keeps increasing. I mean, this is a yeah. huge number, again, just for Apple. Uh, and, and I wonder if they could, you know, start to think about maybe moving toward the Amazon model. I don't think they would. I mean, strong, strong, uh, strong margins on their devices is a big part of what's made Apple as successful as they are. Uh, but ultimately, you know, maybe this points to uh, to some future devices that maybe have slimmer margins. The, the, you mean the Amazon model in the sense that you give away the hardware because you're going to make money when people use it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Or at least have slimmer margins in, or in doing so. Or <laughs> do what they're doing right now, which is make money the whole time. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, exactly. Make money, make money on the front and on the back. <laughs> yeah. Front, back, up, down, <laughs> left, right. It's all profit. If they're if they last quarter it was four point one billion. This quarter three point nine billion. Mm -hmm. Total of eight billion dollars in six months. That's revenue. That's insane. But you got they've gotta be, even if it's ten percent margin, they're making they're no longer break even. No. It's no longer break even. That's amazing. Sure. It is. Wow. Like forget app sales and things and, like that. And it's gotta drive the record industry crazy because basically there's nothing they can do about it. They'd love to shut Apple down. Oh, yeah. They sold thirty two point one I'm sorry, thirty one point two million iPhones, more than anybody expected last quarter. Fourteen point six million iPads. So it's up twenty percent for iPhones, but mm -hmm. down. 14% for iPads, but that's because right. they need a new one. They need a new one. And the other thing to th that's really interesting to point out that you're probably about to point out is how how many of the iPhones they're selling are the old iPhones. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Only half are iPhone 5s. Yeah, and, uh, and, and they're selling so many of what we would call the older iPhones, which is why so many people, and that's 30, uh, iPhone 4S is 30% of the iPhone sales. People Such are walking in buying a 4S. Or and, a 4. Or a 4. 20% must be fours. Fours, yeah. Yeah. But that show, well. Yeah, 18% in June 2013. It's your mom's fault. It is her fault. And, <laughs> but you know, but but this this shows that I think that people are ready for some kind of Cheap phone. cheaper yeah. iPhone. And this is why we keep, oh, it's going to have a plastic case. So it's going to have other. And this is because it seems weird because the perception is that the iPhone 4S or the 4 is the old phone that's right. the old phone and people don't want to buy something that's old like they don't want an old even though but they even are though it's, yeah but if we if apple were to give them something that could play a little bit better down market more modern but and, free yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that was that was free or that right. was cheap and maybe why wouldn't people fun use colors that? but it's your mom again because she thinks that a her. $50 iPhone is significantly cheaper than a $200 iPhone. Mm -hmm. It's not. Mm -hmm. Because the cost of the iPhone either way is the monthly cost over two years, right. which is thousands. Mm -hmm. So she's saving a few percentage points over the total cost. Right. But to her, and this is the problem, it's not just her, it's everybody. You know, uh, the issue is what do I pay uh, out the door is, is more important to them than the total cost of the phone, mm -hmm. which is thousands. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you convince people of that. And uh, Ken from Chicago is saying, when has Apple gone for the low-priced demographic? When have they, they have ever it. gone? But I think it, they, they, in this space, this, this may be the time when they do it. I'll give you the example. I think that's germane is what they did with the iPod. They, owned, they put out the iPod, one iPod, mm -hmm. owned the space. And as mm -hmm. soon as they owned this space, then they said, okay, let's fill in the nooks and crannies. Let's do the shuffle. 
Let's do the Nano. Right. And they became very, very big sellers. Let's do the iPod Touch. Mm -hmm. They completely, so they sewed up every category of that market and basically owned all music players. And I think that that's potentially what they'd like to do. I don't think it's possible at this point with Android. And the other parallel there, too, is, is that those devices weren't really... Uh, pitched as being made to a cost, and they certainly didn't look or feel like they were made to a cost either. They just happened right. to be cheaper because they had simpler functionality. Right. And I think that's definitely what we'll see from, you know, if indeed there is a new iPhone coming this fall on this lower cost. I, I think it'll be played up as a kind of fun looking, uh, maybe smaller, cooler looking device for people who want something a little bit more exciting looking maybe uh, that also happens to be at a lower cost. Uh, and, and I would bet I would bet that that cost message is actually going to kind of get lost in the shuffle compared to everything else, at least from the Apple standpoint. Everybody else, though, will pick up on the cost as, as the main selling point of, of whatever this new device is. Right. Right. Tim makes a really good point, I think. And, and, and to extend that a little bit is that if we think of it as a cheap iPhone, that's kind of like boring and that's Apple. Yeah, I don't um, want a cheap right. iPhone. If we think of it as the same way you pointed out, the Nano the shuffle right. these are very different devices if there's right. a way for apple to come out with a device that is a phone that's very different from the five that that differentiates itself somehow in the same way that i think the ipad mini differentiates itself from the full-size ipad it's a different device yes you can do many of the same things with it but they're different if they were to come out with a phone that was lower cost point but had other features and maybe it's more fun maybe it's colors i mean little things like that like people really care about iPhone getting shuffle. Their, <clears throat> yeah, colors like that's a big deal to 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 people getting a phone that's a yeah. you know, color. That could be the thing that oh, it's cheaper, but it's a color and it's whatever. I'm gonna get that one for my kid mm -hmm. instead of the full price one. It's plastic. You use an of, iPhone? Yeah, Tim, you use an iPhone? Uh, I, I certainly have spent a lot of time with an iPhone, but no, my daily driver is uh, a Galaxy Note two. Actually, I like the Note two. I I'm looking forward to seeing the Note three. Yeah, but I'm too. I'm very excited. I am a little. I'm gonna confess something. I'm a little soured on Samsung. I think the Gal the uh, Jet Galaxy S4 didn't improve much and added a lot of cruft, you know, watching your eyes and stuff mm -hmm. like that. That mm -hmm. I don't. Unfortunately, a lot of stuff didn't really work very well. I, I think it was a lot of great concepts and a lot of interesting ideas of, of moving, you know, moving the way that you interact with your phone forward in a, a very different sort of conceptual way. Uh, but the problem is a lot of it doesn't really work very well. The motion gestures are, are okay, but the you know scrolling with your eyes is is clunky. And if you're on a train that's bumping around, it doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really work at all. It's a great idea, I think, but it just doesn't work quite so well. As I use the this Nexus Seven, as, you know, I don't have a Nexus Four. A lot of a lot of phone people, Android people, love the Nexus Four, which is a pure Google phone. And I used the early pure Google phones, and I and I came to love things uh, like TouchWiz, Samsung's edition, because it made it more usable. But now as I use the Nexus 7, which is back to a pure Google experience, I think Android is, is improved and matured to the degree now that you don't want that carrier stuff on top of it. Yeah. That a pure that I think more and more people want the pure uniform oh, for uh, sure. Google experience. For sure. And I think somebody would be very smart to make a phone. I think they could compete successfully against Samsung and even HTC. I love the HTC One, but it's so weird and non-standard and the buttons are odd that... If somebody made a pure Google experience phone that was modern and had all the features, I think they might do very well. No, I agree with you, but the carriers and, the, and specifically more the manufacturers, it's a differentiator, that's how they want to do it. They yeah. want to, oh, we have a different thing here that's better and the button's over here. And like that's appealing to some users, I guess, because it looks different, but that's the only way because they're all having to use the same I operating system. I think Samsung system. went too far with it. Yeah. And they've gone down the road and now they've really junked up. And I agree with you, Tim. I loved the Note 2. And I'm very curious about the Note 3, but if it's loaded up with all that Samsung stuff. I yeah, I think it will be. I think it's pretty inevitable. And ultimately, we could see even more stuff as they try to make the the S Pen, the stylus, more right. of a useful feature. I use right. the stylus quite a bit Do as you? it is. I don't really need anything fancy okay. or any more smarts added to it. I really just need to sign stuff and, you know, maybe do the occasional doodle on there too, which doesn't hurt. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think we'll probably see some more smarts, some more gestures, some more eye recognition and things like that. And hopefully it'll be a little bit better implemented than it was on, uh, on the GS4. It's, I, in a way, I kind of, I'm rooting against Samsung because they're so dominant. They are, they are now, it's really, the market is split, iPhone and Samsung, mm -hmm. with a lot of also rands. And I don't want to see anyone become that dominant. So I'm kind of hoping that somebody can compete against them strongly. And I feel like that because they're so dominant, they're coasting. And that's what worries me. And you're right, though. The S Pen is a unique feature that uh, both on the tablets and on the phones uh, is a differentiator that's, that's, 
See, I, I never used it, but I'm, I'm not an artist. So you really use it. Yeah, I've actually started using it for if I'm doing an interview, taking notes, for example. Um, I used to carry a Moleskine around with me wherever I go. And I used to carry a voice recorder around with me, too. Uh, but now I just use my Note 2. I record the voice on there and I take notes right on there, too. Um, so that's two less things that I have to pack, which which if you travel as much as I do is, is a pretty valuable improvement. So that right there was was a really strong buying point for the Note 2. But the, the battery life on that is fantastic. Right. Uh, that also was a huge, huge. Strong point for me. That's why I put Skype on the Nexus 7. Really? And I'm so close. You know, I have a phone number on it. I'm so close to just saying this is my phone. Right. <laughs> Holding it up to your ear like a phone? <laughs> well, that's not... Okay, you know, a lot... Remember when pe when the iPad came out and people were taking pictures of it? You said, isn't that stupid? And now it's all you see. Yeah. Admittedly, it's still stupid, but it's like, well, we're used to it. <laughs> and when the Note 2 came out, people said, what is that, a Hershey bar? What are you holding up to your mm -hmm. ear? I admit this looks stupid, but I think you could get used to it. No. No? No. No, no. I don't like making calls on my notes. All the women in the audience are shaking their heads. I have a large head. No, that's not. And even then, I don't. You don't. You don't think that's hot when I do that? No, no. They're going. No. I think you can pull it off. I don't know if the regular man on the street can pull it off. Well, the truth is, people are using earbuds. They're using. People don't hold their phone up. You don't hear. You you don't see that as much anymore, do you? People holding their phone up. Not as much, but you know, push comes to shove, you you got to do it. You got to do it. I'm so tempted. I wanted I I wanted Apple to do that with the iPad Mini. Just make it the next iPhone. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's a perfect segue into your next article here. That Which Apple is? the one that Apple is testing different sizes. Oh yeah, of I screens. don't buy that. Well, of course they're <laughs> testing different sizes yeah, of screens because they're always testing different sizes of screens. Right. You can't for tell what they're going to do from what they're testing. They should test every single possible size of screen at all times. <laughs> Why this not? Is, this is the Wall Street Journal, which normally is pretty well placed, um, but I don't know if that is very. People at Apple suppliers said it asked for prototype smartphone screens larger than its current iPhone in recent recent months, and then has asked for screen designs for new tablets measuring slightly less than thirteen inches, slightly more than thirteen inches. So what? Half of thirteen they inches. Probably, Twice as much. Yeah, it means nothing. <laughs> it means nothing. Of course, they're doing this. <laughs> be crazy probably not to. Each supplier and said, Who's surprised? Okay, give me a 10.1 inch screen, give me a 10.2 inch screen. And then they went each one incremented by a tenth each time. And now right. they're waiting to see which size is actually but Samsung did that. still out into the journalist. Samsung did that. There's a Galaxy completely. There's a Galaxy Mini, there's the Note, uh, and everywhere and everything in between. Samsung has five or six different sizes of mm -hmm. Galaxy phones. This would be a great way for Apple to find out which suppliers are leaking information to the media. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a great you point. Get the 3.74 inch mm -hmm. phone. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't think that means anything, no. and I think Apple Apple's always doing this kind of thing. I, I ignore these stories, and I ignore patent stories, because Apple patents everything. Mm -hmm. If you invent it, patent it. Mm -hmm. You never know. But it doesn't mean you're going to make anything with it. And move to Texas. And move yeah. to Tyler, Texas. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just looking at an a picture of Anthony Weiner. It just makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> That's a good one. Stock phone. Stock phone. You know, you can. You know, just never can <laughs> That's have the too one much to of use. that. That's the one to use. Uh, <laughs> we're going to take a break and uh, come back. We're going to talk about hackers, and then we'll wrap it up. How about that? Dan Benjamin's here, 5 by 5tv uh, Tim uh, Stevens, from uh, formerly uh, editor-in-chief of Engadget. He's now blogging at digitaldisplacement.com, where you can find out about his races. First, first thing in, I, I, I almost don't want to say now blogging. First post in eight years, six years. I started things up again. Yeah, we'll, we'll put it. That he way. has been digitally displaced. When you're an editor in chief at Engadget, <laughs> do you write much? Did you write, do, or was it mostly like going, like taking a red pencil to stuff? Uh, there was a lot of red penciling going on. It was, you know, a lot of management and firefighting yeah. and problem solving. So you probably kind of, added, definitely a lot of add a shape but, for writing. Uh, I, I definitely did write, you know, reviews for the premier devices, and I tried to do yeah. some event coverage when I could. I did as much writing as I could ultimately, but yeah, there were uh, a lot of other things to do that uh, they did take me away. When so, you yeah, left, when you left, was it like branded? Did they take your Google Glass and rip it off your head? Uh, it was actually broken at the time. I just got it replaced. So uh, actually, I still have the glass oh, here. No, good. nobody, nobody ripped it off my head yet. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> sorry. Audible.com, ladies and gentlemen, wants to introduce you to 340 great college courses, 9,000 lectures from the world's most engaging professors. We've talked about Audible a lot. I'm a huge, as you know, Audible fan. 
Uh, Audible, I enter, get entertained by Audible in the car, at the gym, at when I'm washing the clothes and making the bed. I listen to Audible all the time. And I've been a fan for years of the of the uh, great courses. I subscribed to the catalog and uh, bought many of these great courses. So I was so pleased when I saw that Audible had made a deal with the great courses um, to uh, include these as part of Audible. So if you if you go to audible.com slash great courses, you can see what some of these lectures are. The one that I just completed uh, last year and really like these are these are college professors, actual college courses. Whoops, did I type the right thing? The wrong thing? Great courses. Audible.com slash great courses. Well, maybe the site's not up yet on Oh, oh, because I'm a member. I can't do it. Okay. So members, you can't do it. You can just search for great courses. The one I did was uh, how to listen to and understand music. Yeah, there's the non-member site. Um, and it was incredible. It's Professor Robert Greenberg. Uh, 36 hours. I think it's something like 20 lectures. Um, and he starts with the beginning of classical music with Josquin Dupre, who I'd never heard of and became a huge fan of. Plays music, teaches you about all of this stuff. What's a fugue? What's a canon? What was Bach up to? Beethoven? Mozart? Uh, it's actually 48 lectures, and uh, boy, I, I have a huge new appreciation of, um, of music, all the way up to Stravinsky. Um, but that's just one. They have literally uh, 340 courses on there now, in addition to the 100,000 books. Literature, history, wellness, music, science, philosophy, theology. Fill your brain with great stuff by the world's most effective communicators, the best professors, the best experts. And guess what? Your first one's free. The great ideas of philosophy. Well, I like this. Your deceptive mind, a scientific guide to critical thinking skills. Professor Stephen Novella. Wow, that would be cool. Uh, maybe you're uh, into physics. You want to learn about Einstein and the quantum revolution? For non-scientists, Professor Richard Wolfson, you can get this for free. So here's the deal. If you visit audible.com slash great courses, if you haven't already taken advantage of our 30-day trial membership, do. You can download a course, any course, for free. Cancel at any time. That course is yours to keep. The Art of Storytelling from Parents to Professionals. Foundations of Economic Prosperity. Food. A Cultural Culinary History. I love this. Espionage and Covert Operations. A Global History. By Professor Lulevicius. Ooh. <laughs> Even his name sounds mysterious. And evil. Mimi Guarneri, who is really great. The Science of Natural Healing. Art of Critical Decision-Making. The Secret Life of Words. See, I want to listen to every one of these, but then I wouldn't have time to do this. So get your first one free, audible.com slash great courses. Try that today. Um, and we thank them so much for this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help but laugh. It's funny. It's a good it's just, photo. It's just a good picture. It's it was a good apparently photo. a Wall Street Journal article on the appeal of embarrassment. I'm going to be the guy that takes that photo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny he's hot Carlos Danger ladies and gentlemen hot <laughs> actually this is kind of a sad story yeah, so sad. Barnaby Jack who was a hacker he was on his way to the black hat convention he was going to present and maybe this was just karma he was going to present a techniques for attacking pacemakers implanted heart devices it could kill a user from 30 feet away he died yeah he was 30 I know he was 35 years old Authorities are investigating. They don't know the cause of death. He did not point. have a pacemaker. He did not. Do you know that? No, I'm asking. I don't know. I don't know. I believe he did, actually. What? Really? Did he? I, th I thought he did. Um, uh, something in, else. Apparently, well, what there are uh, 350,000 pacemakers in use in the U.S., 173,000 implantable cardioverter defibrillators, Uh and these are wireless devices that are apparently hackable. I'm hoping that he took the uh, the hack to his grave, but I don't know. My understanding is that they the the way that now that they adjust these things is through, you know, some kind of wireless connection, so that if you need to have it modified, if it's right. not beating at the right, right. speed mm -hmm. or whatever, you you attach it, and it, it instead of having to physically attach something, you Wi-Fi into it or something, <sighs> which is also weird. But who knows what happened there? That that's sad. 
Yeah, no kidding. Um, and Chipotle, Chipotle faked its Twitter hack. Right. Really? Did you read that? Were you paying attention to that? Yeah. What happened? So um, it wasn't that crazy. People were talking about it, it was is funny. the most insane thing that ever no. happened. It was the first tweet was mittens thirteen password leave, right? And then in end Twitter. Those feel like like somebody was typing into Hootsuite or something right. and not realizing that it was sending those to Twitter. Right? Yeah, that's what you. That's would what think. that feels like. That's what the. So it's good. It's it. Made sense. Then the ones that say, hi, sweetie, can you please pick up some lime, salt, and onions? Mm -hmm. Twitter, that's obviously yeah, fake. Yeah, Or what is cilantro? How do you pronounce it? That's obviously fake. Um, it just seems silly. I think this is Did what happened. Did it work happened. for them? Well, it, it, certainly we're, we're covering it. Got attention. Yeah. Here's what I think happened. I think the first two really were, somebody blew it. Mm -hmm. And it was typing in what they thought was one window. Or, mm -hmm. was, or like some intern couldn't figure out how to exit the content management system mm -hmm. that posted to Twitter and typed mittens13 password leave mm -hmm. and then end Twitter and then gasped <laughs> and said, oh, my God, these were tweeted. And then some somebody came over and said, no, no, I'll take care of it. Right. We'll just pretend that, that was all intentional and we'll start typing, typing about avocados in Arvada. Mm -hmm. So I think it's both. I think somebody... I think some intern started as a real crisis turned into a marketing. <laughs> yeah. They say, oh, no, it was a publicity stunt tied to our 20th anniversary. Mm. We'll never know. We won't. Plus, they have the GMO food anyway. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I'm not eating there anymore. Well, some of it's not. Some of it is. Really? Yeah. The, oh, wow. The carnitas, I think you're all right. The carnitas are real pigs. <laughs> yeah, I think those are okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're not like some laboratory. <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> Did you see there's a guy who's you're in you're into paleo, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't know this. Dan Benjamin was about four hundred forty pounds. Mm -hmm. He was he was like he was my size. <laughs> and then only started eating steak at day in, day That's out. That's right. Steak and eggs. I've always thought that and maybe you could do this. There should be uh, you know how Purina, Purina has horse chow, dog chow, it's perfectly formulated. Everything a dog needs. There should be human chow. That, so like soylent green or something. Well, there's a guy like who Futurama. is actually making soylent. <laughs> <laughs> He's invented the perfect human food. Right. And he calls it Soylent, which I think is a bad idea because it's not made of humums. <laughs> and they raised? they $800,000 $800, he's raised bucks. for this. You should call it Bachelor Chow. It's, is it, but it's soy something. No, there's no soy in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just badly named because oh, Soylent man. Green is made of people. This is for people, not made of people. Okay. But I like, I mean, if there were th something I could eat, like you would just get, I could have a scoop a day. Of human chow, mm -hmm. and then I wouldn't. I would have to think, and I would be thin like Dan. I would eat that. Sure, you would eat anything. Sure. You're, what That's do you true. eat? For you bacon and eggs for breakfast. Bacon and eggs Me for too. breakfast. Sometimes a burger with no bun or something like that for lunch, and then uh, dinner. Did you lose? Are we, were you fat at one point? Uh, I mean, I I was never. You weigh how much? One hundred five. I probably weigh one hundred and forty. No, no. One thirty five. One really? You're yeah. tiny, tiny guy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm totally ripped. Like, it's crazy. Let me see the six-pack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's theater of the mind. The radio is right. Oh, so yeah, I'll radio. Show you later. Yeah, it's radio, yeah. Uh, no, it's, uh, you know, it, it definitely, for me, it was more of a health kind of a thing. I had, like, I was a vegetarian, and I jogged, like, five times a week, and I had uh, hypoglycemia and high blood pressure even and though, high cholesterol. Even though. And I went to the doctor, and he said, oh, you should, you should eat less red meat. I said, oh, I don't no eat more. any red meat. More red No, he said eat less. Because he didn't know. He didn't know. And I said, I eat none. And he said, well, you should exercise. I said, I jog <laughs> five times <laughs> a said, week. Dude, you're going to die. Yeah. And and so I switched and started going. I went paleo. And for me, it, it for me, it was right. very helpful. And all of the things that were problems And all those went numbers away. Went, got better. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm like, so it's not so genetic. It's, awesome. it's not, your parents are still alive and all that. It's just. My parents are still alive. Yeah. Because I eat paleo. Because of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, I want this. Although this guy apparently knows nothing. And it's made out of like maltodextrin. It doesn't sound healthy to me. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I don't um, want to drink that. The register lived on it. Somebody at the register tried it for a week. Uh, he said, we didn't lose weight, but we didn't go crazy. <laughs> and we haven't felt hungry, although we did lust after real food, which is about what I would expect. I see this as like an emerge, like it's in a it's in a packet and you have it in your your backpack or something or your purse. And, like, you realize you're going to be without food, crack this thing open, right. 
you drink this, you can last another three hours, you're all right. Didn't well, you do paleo, though, for a while? I I still kind of do it, but the problem is every once in a while, I'll then have, like, a pizza. Yeah, the mm -hmm. whole thing? The whole thing. Okay. Because I miss it. <laughs> no, I, I've <laughs> done it for a while, and I really believe it. Steve Gibson is a huge believer, but I, unlike many... Uh, who've had great results. It mm -hmm. is it is individual. I have did not have those great results. Mm -hmm. I was in ketosis. My breath smelled bad, but I wasn't losing any weight, so I just gave up. It, it's different for everybody. everybody it is. Needs to find your body own, is right. Their own yeah. balance is yeah. different. I'm not telling I'm just, anyone to I'm do just, it. No, no. No, no. Or Steve Gibson is. Anyway, this guy raised $797,000. He was only asking for $100,000. Uh, he's got $6,000 for it. But see, this is what I'm saying. People want human chow. Oh, it doesn't even look good. Um, does he talk about what it is? It doesn't look good. It really doesn't look good. <laughs> and he's just making it up, right? He doesn't know what he's doing. No, he's not a scientist. That's the key. You need a scientist. It's just this guy. Um, he is a wise he's an electrical engineer. Alumnus. He's an electrical engineer. So, so that's, he, that that's where I want my food from. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, it looks like his teeth are about to fall out. I'll be honest with <laughs> no, you. I think there's a lack of calcium or something. He looks fine. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Soylent. He's thin. It's Soylent. The Apple Developer Center's back, Leo. Are you excited? No, is it back up? It's back. Right yeah, now? it came oh, back. Wow. When did it come back? Uh, this is a huge problem. Friday it came back. So developer.apple.com, and then if you uh, clicked on the iOS Dev yeah, like Center. Member like, Center, yeah, or any of, the, yeah, any of those. You'd get work, a thing yeah. that said, sorry, we're down mm -hmm. because we were hacked. Mm -hmm. Eight days, apparently they rewrote the software re-jiggered uh, the database. There was mm -hmm. a massive flaw, apparently. Yeah. I have seen, and I don't know if it's true. I remember the guy who uh, first exposed this Turkish guy, Balich, I think is his yeah. name. Um, I have seen logs that show that whoever hacked this got certificates. Mm, interesting. That's the concern. And, it, and I think Apple must have this concern because you are about to ship iOS 7, mm -hmm. like in the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. The dev center is down for eight days. You only do that if it's absolute crisis mode, right? Oh, yeah. Can you imagine to, what that data center and those It has look to have like. been really bad. Mm, bad. So the greatest fear is, you know, Apple, the way Apple works, if you want to have an app on the App Store on OS X or in the App Store on iPhone, you have to have a developer certificate right. that certifies that you are the developer who wrote this. Apple kind of, by doing that, Apple is protecting end users in fact, you can set your machine that it cannot open or install an app that isn't certified by Apple. Uh, most people have the default setting, which is Apple will warn you and say, hey, you know, this isn't certified. You just downloaded this from the web. We don't know who this is. You can override that by right-clicking. But um, if these certificates leaked out, that means malware mm -hmm. could then pose as a legitimate uh, a program. That would be very bad. It would be extremely bad. Um, Apple's not talking. Um, they were a little bit forthright, at least saying, yeah, we got hacked. Right. I'm, I'm actually s somewhat concerned that this is a larger issue, but we may never know. We won't know. That's for sure. We won't know. Um, it's, you know, I know a lot of Apple developers, both iOS and Mac developers, and these people have been, in some cases, just completely derailed. They can't update their app if there's a problem. They can't do anything. They can't get into it. Eight days is a lot when you're... Oh, you're for, literally just a few it. weeks away from release. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, and then you also have certificates expiring and things like that, developer certificates that could expire, as you explained, um, identifiers, profiles, all of this stuff. And, of course, even things like being able to submit bugs, that was all gone. Uh, being able to go in and download a beta that might have come out, you couldn't download right. betas of Mavericks or of iOS 7. There's been speculation this might hold up iOS 7 and maybe even mm. hold up the iPhone. You think so? Wow, I I, uh, I mean I don't I'm gonna say no I don't think so. Tim follows this probably even better than I do. No, I don't think it'll hold up the iPhone. I think this was as much an issue on the desktop as it was on mobile. Uh, and I don't think you know unless they had to rip a lot of developers away from other projects, which I'm sure they did to some degree. Uh, I don't think it would have derailed things so badly that they'd have to push things back. And even if they did, it would only be by by one week, which at this point I'm sure they can float if they need to. So, so you know maybe things will come in a week later than than Apple had wanted them to be. But uh, but no, I don't think they'll miss the uh, the the fall shipping season by any means for for either iOS seven or for the new iPhone or iPhones. Hope yeah. not.
And the chat room has passed along the uh, the breaking news story. Uh, you know, many actors put a lot of effort, a lot of work into living a character. Remember, Robert De Niro gained weight for Raging Bull, Raging like Bull. 60, 60 pounds. Mm -hmm. um, Sylvester Stallone learned English for Rocky. <laughs> so it's really, it's uh, something that people nice. really, uh, did not not well, but he learned it. It's something that people really take seriously. Apparently, Ashton Kutcher... Spent three months learning to walk like yeah. Steve Jobs. That is the dedication that he put into that movie, mm -hmm. which have I predict will be it? the worst movie of the year. No, I have. I've only seen the trailers. <laughs> the trailer Jason Snell to uh, told much. me he was going to see it Thursday or Friday. He's seen night. it? He has seen it. We got to ask him. Yeah, mm -hmm. he has seen. It. <laughs> I just from what I've seen. It well, first of all, remember it debuted at Sundance like. A year ago, and then they pulled it back, which is always a bad sign. Yeah, that's and not it's good. coming out August sixteenth. But watch, I'm just saying, when uh, Ashton Kutcher walks, notice how he lifts his feet, and apparently, <laughs> no, this is this is, Kutcher said this. <laughs> I see that Steve Jobs uh, <laughs> walked funny because he used to walk barefoot a lot and he didn't want to stub his toes, so he got very good at lifting his feet. Off the ground. Okay. And Ashton Kutcher really brings that to he life. Really, <laughs> method acting is what they call that. Yes. Kutcher says, I loved a man I never knew. Oh. Wow. Well, on that note, I think it's time to move on. I want to thank you for uh, coming up uh, and refer everybody to 5by5.tv. Thank you. That's Dan Benjamin's site where he does more shows than we do. It was for, at the beginning of this show it was 42. It is now 48 shows. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I don't know how he does it. How many? 32? 32. 32. It's gone down. <laughs> you're canceling In the show? course, yeah, we've got While rid, you're doing the show, we got rid of show. we got rid of like 10 shows just is that within active? the last two is hours. That, is that is Hattie? Yes. Is it active shows, Hattie? Active. So you're not including you know the you know hipstamatic or whatever it is that you used to do. No, no, that's only maybe the number we gave you initially was all all shows, all shows ever total shows, and now these are live current live shows. But thank you for the reference, Leo. I wouldn't be able to to do the stuff I do without you because you're stealing all my hosts. But that's okay. I mean, one by one, <laughs> you line uh, them up on over them there. Uh, Gina Trapani's <laughs> doing a show with um, Kevin, Kevin uh, Purdy, Purdy mm -hmm. which is called that is in beta. That is in beta. Well, in beta. It's in I'm beta. Referring to that's it the as, show's name. That yeah. is comma. That is quote yes. underline in beta. <laughs> yes. Uh, back to work. Back with to Merlin work Man. with Merlin Mann. I knew him once. Well, uh, he, the, the the guy who used to be Merlin Mann. He was formerly Merlin. Formerly Man. known as Merlin Mann. Yeah. Well, we I, call him Prince now. He wants to be called Prince. Yeah. I understand. He has a symbol. Yeah. Uh, Zelman does a show there. Lots of great mm -hmm. people. Really, uh, it, it, especially if you're into uh, Max web design developing mm -hmm. it's a great place for that five by five dot thank you for that tim stevens will be racing at a track near you soon watch for him <laughs> in his mark ii toyota uh and looking at and mr2 not mark ii mr2 and uh anything else uh you want to tell us about the blog is uh, digital displacement.com are what are you gonna yeah, do gonna, are you gonna just post a lot of stuff there or is it just kind of a place to stay in touch just to stay in touch as I have time, I do have a review that's going to be going up there, maybe tomorrow, maybe Tuesday, okay. of uh, something with four wheels. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to do some posting there, some uh, some editorializing, and some stuff just to keep myself busy and keep the you know keep the fingers limber as I uh, wait to see what's next. And right after the show, Dan and I are going to leg wrestle to see who gets rights to Tim Stevens' All right. podcast. Okay. <laughs> I hope you let me tune in for that one. <laughs> or do I just I have to find you, out afterwards? I have massive thighs. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we do Twit every Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. <laughs> Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, that is 2200 UTC on twit.tv. Do tune in live if you can. As I said, live is important to us, mostly because we just like the interaction with the audience. And uh, it's so much fun to, to watch the chat room and, uh, and visit with you as we're doing the show. But if you can't, on demand, always good. On demand, audio and video available at twit.tv, wherever your favorite podcasts are. In fact, you can uh, press that subscribe button at iTunes, the Zoom Store, uh, Dog Catcher, Instacast, Pocket Cast, whatever you use, and make sure you get every episode. You don't want to miss one of them because they're always great. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to Chad Johnson, our producer, the old redhead, and uh, we'll see you next time. Another this twit. Is amazing. Oh,